Yes, you hear that. Oh. Hello, we're live. Hello. Hello. Amazing. So, okay, so I guess I should introduce, you know, this as we start to get this thing going. We have Nathan here from Nathan Talks Movies, who disagrees with you know everything I say and has wrong opinions about everything. Woo! <laughs> and, and we also have a reasonable critic who sometimes can be right, but is mostly wrong about everything. Yeah, that's a very true. Very true. I'm mostly okay. unreasonable. Okay, so I saw this like pop. The reason why I did this is because I saw this thing on a guy's podcast where they sort of did this thing where someone like you know had a list of like any sort of media. And everyone else would just, you know, insult them about it and critique them about it, which is basically what we're doing here. And part of the reason why I chose you two, because you're the two main people that are available that I know are going to disagree with most of the stuff I have to say. So because of that, what we're going to do is I'm going to, like, list. Oh, um, you froze. Uh, oh, that is a very interesting phrase. Some of my favorite. Oh, God dang. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did it cut to? Uh, yeah, you said you're gonna list. Yeah, you said that you're gonna Okay. Okay. So basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna list my favorite movie from each year from two thousand to two thousand twenty two. And they're gonna tell me, you know, which ones are L takes and what I should actually put in there. Yep. Instead of, you know, what I did put in there. And I know they're both gonna disagree probably more than <laughs> they're gonna disagree with, you know, my list. So because of that, I decided, so I guess we should just, you know, get this started with the very first movie, you know, 2000. Let me pull up the list real quick. So there's a lot of movies I could have picked. A, a lot of movies, you know, you got Unbreakable and Monsters, Inc. or whatever. Monsters but Inc. the movie I picked. It's not Monsters, Inc. Oh, it, oh, oh, okay, never mind then. I, I guess that works very well then. Okay, but the <laughs> movie I picked was Snatch. Directed by Guy Ritchie. <laughs> I haven't seen it, but like, how could you not pick the the Sigma male movie, American Psycho? Wait, what about well, Almost Famous? Movie. I haven't seen American Psycho, so it well, that's your you that's your problem. That. <laughs> Hold on, you're gonna put you're gonna put Almost Famous, Monsters Inc., and American Psycho in, well, no, in behind Snatch. Well, still the more. I, I haven't I haven't seen Almost Famous. Almost so. Famous is mediocre so like i don't really even play okay. <laughs> uh, here we go <laughs> oh god uh and monsters it's 2001 and what did i just agree to the the, the other <laughs> one okay monsters um inc. i think that monsters inc almost famous and something else i can't remember the other one yeah but i guess that yeah monsters inc is 2001 though not 2000 oh i'm sorry i don't know why it says on here I'm just looking up 2,000 films. It's not. It's, yeah, that's okay, fine. It's it. not on either. It's not. It's it's not on 2001 either. So it's okay. Okay then. Um, America, <laughs> I mean, okay, then American <laughs> Psycho and Unbreakable. Okay, so what do you guys think should have been here? Uh, um, American Psycho. Yeah, I probably would uh, go American Psycho. I I like Unbreakable too. Um. I have like I've seen a ton of movies from that year that like neither of you have probably seen. Yeah. <laughs> so like, which is why which is why I brought you here. Yeah. <laughs> so like I can like Dance in the Dark, Requiem for a Dream, In the Mood for Love, Amores Peros, Oh Brother right. Where Art Thou. Those are all I was actually in Snatch. I mean Snatch is a good movie. I like that movie. I mean I haven't seen Snatch, so I couldn't like give my opinion oh, on that. Yeah. It looks and I, I've heard it's one of Guy Ritchie's better films. He's not really a director that interests me a lot, but I've heard it's one of his better films. Mm. But yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I have I can kind of see that. Yeah. Okay. So 2001. Yeah, are you huh? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> okay, so basically. All right, let me explain. So obviously Snatch probably isn't you know, technically the best made or whatever. There's probably, you know, other movies on there that I've seen that are probably better made than Snatch. However, it I love so basically lock I don't think either of you guys have seen Lockstock, right? Lockstock and just looking barrels. Uh no I haven't. I don't think so. Okay, so basically that movie has like a an amazingly crafted plot. It it has like, you know, a great script and everything. This movie basically has all of that and you know, because everything ties in together. There's all these tiny little things, they all tie in together. You know, it reminds me a lot of Tarantino, it's great. Basically, that movie has that, except for it's better. It's more entertaining. It's more fun. 
It's a little bit shorter, so you know it's a little bit more fast paced or whatever. It's just uh, you're freezing up again. Man, he freezes. <laughs> I I see. Issues linked. There we go. Okay, now does it work? Yeah, well, the quality dropped though, but yeah. Ah, okay, that sucks. But basically, the whole point of like the basically, you know, it has a great well-constructed script script but it's also very fun and entertaining which is why i put it here so yeah yeah i mean i need to rewatch it but i feel like almost famous is just the objectively better movie and so is american psycho i mean objectivity well, doesn't really exist exactly no, like, like to me i just feel like it's better made all right yeah. i don't know almost famous i had a lot of issues with regarding yeah that. i get that it, i get that it's flawed but i I don't know. I always had problems with like the pace of Snatch. I kind of felt like it was all over the place, but I don't know if that's just me. Yeah. Um. I, I don't know. There, there's definitely a decent amount of movies from 2000 that I have to actually like, you know, watch. Yeah. But from what I've seen, this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the next one is, is okay. So 2001, you know, there's some pretty great movies from this year. Fellowship of the Ring, Monsters Inc. There's probably more that I can't really think of off the top of my head. But I decided to put down Spirited Away, which oh. is um, – Yeah. That's, so, that's, I mean, I agree. That's actually my favorite of the year, too, so I can't say anything about it at all. Well, okay. okay. Was, go off. Go away. <laughs> Let's hear this. Yeah. So I've uh, – I think I've been pretty public with the fact that I don't love Spirited Away. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty okay. I don't. I don't really like movies that are just kind of like – this is the world, let us show you it. I kind of prefer when they're more, I don't know, like grounded. I feel like you just go to too many locations. It's just kind of all over the place. I can't really get invested in any one location. So I, it's just not like, I just don't feel very like grounded. I feel like I'm just watching like a theme park ride of like, you know, a bunch of different places. So I, I mean, I guess that's fair. You know, kind of, it kind of is that, except for, you know, I think I, if you would call it a theme park ride, which I wouldn't, I'd say it's an amazing theme park ride because of the way. a theme park ride at all. Theme park ride implies it has nothing to say and just there. Yeah, exactly. Like, like how dare you compare it to the MCU? Yeah, like that's basically Sorry, a Marvel yeah. movie. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you picked uh, Infinity War. You okay, you're not going to look Okay, you're, you're uh, not going to look you're not gonna like my pick then. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with your pick. I mean, like there are some other films that like I would recommend from that year, but like just because like there's some other great films I would recommend from that year, but like I agree with your pick. Uh, you guys don't yeah. think Lord of the Rings? You guys don't think Fellowship is better? Oh, no, I, oh, think, I, I mean, no, it's better than Fellowship. Fellowship's great, and I love Fellowship. I, I love Fellowship, but it's not even the greatest Lord of the Rings movie. So. Yeah. yeah I I never understood I never understood like how to separate them. Like I just watched all three of them. I feel like it's just one 12 hour movie. I just mm -hmm. like went in my ranking, I just count it, I just put all three of them right at like one, two, three in that order. Not even yeah. because like one is better than three, just because I don't know how to separate them. Yeah. But, it's hard it's hard to rank them. You have to really like, you know, really see them as their individual movies. And when you do that, Two Towers is always going to be the one that everyone puts at the bottom because it's just the second act and you know, there isn't like that introduction or that payoff, so you can't really compare it to those two, which is why, you know, everyone loves the third one because it's the conclusion and everyone Well, every time I feel like that I, every time I feel one. like the, the second one is the worst one. I see the battle at Helm's Deep, and I'm like, oh, no, it's not. And like, I just, I think that's, like, probably the most climactic part of the entire series, but, because it's, like, the first time the war actually, like, comes to the gates of humanity. Yeah, I guess that's fair. But going back to Spirited Away, <laughs> um, I guess part of why I love this movie, I guess I'll kind of try to, you know, explain it to the VA and, you know, introduce them to correct taste is... Because a four point five on letterbox, I don't understand what I'm missing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so basically, a lot of the mo the thing is the movie has like I feel like one of the greatest things about the movie, of course, like obviously is the visuals, and I feel like it it really entices you into this world, into these you know, into this 
I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to really explain this movie. I, the more I think about it. Cause I think one of the things that you're freezing up again. Yeah. Okay. Wait, what do you think, Nathan? What do you think? Uh, I love the movie, of course, uh, and he's kind of right, but I would say that it is both the plot and the visuals that create this world that is certainly weird and very interesting, but the world never feels like it. it very much is going by its own rules and very much going by, you know, it's not breaking it boundaries when it comes to, like, it's not like a movie that, it's not a movie that sets up rules and breaks them, it's a movie that basically more it has its rules but it doesn't really try to be the thing where a lot of movies fail with world building that they set up all these rules and then break them whenever they feel like it and yeah i feel like fail with that because it actually like understands that the like the rules of the world is simply basically anything in this world is possible if we're being completely honest and we kind of see isn't that kind of just like they don't really have to play by the rules at that point. If anything is possible yeah. and like whatever, right? It, it, it's, it has, it's sort of like characters have their certain things that they are in charge of doing and certain characters have their things that they have to do. But more that what you'll see in the world is like complete, like, like the, the rules of the world are consistent. It's more that just a lot is in the world. A lot is in the, so it doesn't, really go by the rules of usual world building where it's just this one thing consistently it but it never feels like it's inconsistent it more it's more that just this world has so many creatures and so many people and this bat this one big bathhouse has so many people because it's a gigantic bath bathhouse full of like one a ton of different monsters why do you why, why does gavin have two <laughs> uh i i had to leave and then come back and can't remove this so Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it's kind of just stuck there. Oh, that's okay. Weird. But you can't press you can't press leave because of your computer. I I, I pressed the leave studio. This thing it's not working. So I oh, guess it's just not double Gavin. Let's go. Ah, uh, let's go. Uh, Echo <laughs> can't. We have two Gavins now. Oh god, this is gonna. Suck. Okay, there we go. No, okay, there. <laughs> Finally, jeez. Hi, Gavin. Okay. Okay, so basically what I was saying is, you know, Spirit Away, I love this. I love, like, the rules. I love the world. It's just, it's a movie that doesn't really feel good. Am I the only one that can hear that echo? Yeah, you have a type, you have a little bit of an echo. But, like, uh, okay. uh, how, do, how do I get rid of it? God, I don't want to, I don't want to. It's not really that noticeable, to be honest. For me, and Okay, how about that? Is that better? It, yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's not bad. It, it's not okay, fine. Uh, okay, so basically what I was saying was that I really love the world. I really love... I think it has, like, the rules are very grounded somewhat in a way for, like, what it is, I feel like. It's not exactly, like, grounded, grounded, but, like, it, it has this, you know, like, it has endless possibilities, and I feel like that, you know, makes it so that I can't really break any of the rules, which, you know, I can understand why Olivier wouldn't like that about the movie, but also it makes it feel like it, it makes it feel very unpredictable. Yeah. You know? Okay. Well, I do have to give that one a rewatch. I think it, I would like it a lot more if I saw it again. I think you would too. So, we okay. Go to 2002? Next one, 2002. Um, I can't really think of that many great movies from this year I can besides Spider Man. So, no. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. I'll probably have to go there. <laughs> no. But I don't think there's anything better. But There's a lot better than Spider Man. Okay, list them. List them. Here. Go. Do it. Okay. Uh, we have Lord of the Rings uh, Two Towers. Oh, okay. Then that's better. <laughs> <laughs> Anything Lord of the Lord of the Rings. Nah, nah I don't think it's better. Top no. four. Nah. I, I still, that <laughs> movie is not better. I'm Punch sorry. Drunk Love, Adaptation, The Pianist, Bowling for Columbine, yes. City of God, mm -hmm. Irreversible, Panic Room. Like, a ton of better movies. Like, Spider-Man is one of my least favorites of that year, to be honest. I don't like it. Really? I don't, like, I, don't really? Like, I don't like modern day Sam Raimi at all. I, I think he, he peaked at Evil Dead and recently he just has not done anything. I hated Multiverse of Madness a lot and I hated it. Yes, I, well, I hated I thought, it. See, I thought the directing was the only thing that saved that movie. Everything else was. Honestly, I, I think that I was the only decent part about the film. I didn't think there was any. 
the direction felt very held back. Like they very much put constraints on him. It, yeah. Oh no, they definitely did. They and definitely that did. An issue. And Five, six, two was was made this year, so I think <laughs> that's the end of our argument. So. Uh, I thought "Drag Me to Hell" was mediocre, also, which is his 2009 movie. Uh, and yeah, no, just, like there's a lot better films than, than Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, I oh, think I Jack asked the movie. Jack asked the movie was kind of a contender, to be honest. So, really? Uh, that's my least favorite Jack. <laughs> 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 Nothing you say can make Nathan happy. <laughs> well, no. He, la- last one we had was pretty good. But like, <laughs> what about Signs? And that oh, John no, no, Signs is not as good as Spider Man. I'm being honest. Signs I, that, that, no. Signs is terrible. <laughs> In Night Shyamalan has only made like one great movie in my opinion, and that's Six Sense. Unbreakable is nah. great. I think no, nah, Unbreakable is great. I think nah, Shyamalan is 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 my favorite director because he's just so distinct. I don't really care that he makes his movies aren't like the best. Like I never thought that Six Sense or like like Unbreakable and Signs like those aren't like top five movies for me. I just I love the the style he brings. I think he's so distinct. His movies, for the most part, for me, just like other than Six Sense, okay. it feels like just very bland in ways. Especially Unbreakable. Unbreakable was a very forgettable experience, other than like the twist near the end. Uh, but Six Sense is Six Sense is the only one I love from him. Uh, I mean, well, I also love Unbreakable, and I don't really like that much else from. I used to really like Science. I used to love that movie, and then I kind of like you know, kind of thought about it more, and I'm like, oh, this movie isn't really that. Good. But yeah, Spider-Man, the reason why I have it here is because, first off, the visuals are great. It has a fantastic origin story. And I think seeing Peter Parker, you know. No, he's freezing. Oh, God. This is the entire stream. So I'm actually going to open here. If I go here, can I respond to these comments? I didn't even know if you were having comments. Let's see. I kind of dislike Multiverse of Madness. It's kind of hard to... Because on, on this place, we can't, right? Yeah. I'll take for two mm. Oh, David... You know what? I, I just want to say that David Catlett is very based. He said his pick is Requiem for a Dream, <laughs> which is very based uh, for 2000. Oh, I yeah. swear, if I freeze up again, I'm just going to go on my phone and then do it from there because I'm getting sick of this. This is getting yeah. annoying. Maybe the phone would be a better option. Yeah, it might actually be. Okay, well, yeah. uh, why don't yeah. you just say 2003 so you can get the conversation going, and then me and yeah. you can uh, keep it. Okay, so I guess I, I'm, I, I'll, I'm just going to explain it a little bit. So basically, the reason, one, one of the main reasons why I love this movie so much is because seeing Peter Parker, you know, grow as a person, seeing him, like, you know, become this person that is somewhat immature and isn't, you know, like, fully, like, capable of being, you know, I, get, I don't know how to explain it, God dang. But, like, because we see him, you know, be, like, act like an immature teen and not exactly a mature person. And then seeing him mature slowly throughout the film and understand things more and understand life more, I think I think it works very well. That's why I really mm-hmm. love the movie. Yeah, it's very – it's definitely the best-paced Raimi movie, I would say, out of the three Raimi movies. Yeah. Okay, uh, 2003. I'm a little scared. What did you pick for 2003? Uh, okay, I, think- I have – I picked Wait, Finding Nemo. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't pick Finding Nemo. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't even okay, be against that if you did. Like, I wouldn't even really be against that if you did. <laughs> you wouldn't be against <laughs> Okay, I picked uh, Daredevil the movie. No, I picked Lord of the Rings Return of the King. Come on. What oh, else is there to pick? Yeah, I, I, I'm I, looking I, here. I, I'm looking at There aren't really that many good movies from 2003 that I'm looking at. I'm just oh, Terminator like, 2 and Kill Bill, actually. We have... Uh, Old for me, my favorite would be Old Boy. I think that's the best one. Um, yeah. Kill Bill, I prefer over it actually. Uh, not not over it. I mean over uh, Return of the King actually. Uh, so I've Old Boy, Kill Bill, Return of the King, Memories of Murder, Lost in Translation. Memories of Murder is better than Return of the King. No. <laughs> wait, wait, which ones? That wait, wait. <laughs> which of those ones are better than? Return of the Kill game. Bill and Old Boy. Uh, Kill Bill, really? Yeah. Uh, someone said. 
Yeah. Someone in the chat said Elf. Nah, no, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> nah. No, I'm sorry, I'll... man. Return of the King. Come on. But uh, uh, Memories of Murder be below. Return of the King is my third favorite. So ain't, ain't, before, gonna... ain't anything else, anything I say here is under Return of the King. Uh, Lost in Translation, Twenty One Grams, Finding Nemo. But I will no, admit, I think the only one to me that I could really think about would be Old Boy, but I don't think Old Boy is better than uh, Return of the King. Terminator Two is a great movie. Terminator Two. Terminator Two. I, I think you're talking about Terminator Three. I think is what you're talking Terminator about. 3. No, that's also in like the nineties or something. Or no, no. Oh yeah, wait. No, Ter Terminator Three is in two thousand three. Terminator <laughs> really Two is in like nineteen ninety two. Something Terminator like 3 is garbage. I apologize. I apologize for ever even <laughs> pretending to like it. My gosh. Terminator 3. Look, that poster does not look like a movie that came out in 2003. <laughs> Neither does. That, that, this looks like something that I swear it did. I, got I swear it did. I saw Kill Bill and Terminator right next to each other. So I was like, oh, Terminator 2 and Kill Bill together. Wow. <laughs> what a good year for movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, okay, fine. Then in that case, it's just old boy, and I still think. That's I mean, Lord of the Rings to me, I have yeah. that at like fourth, ever. Like the entire trilogy, I have it fourth of all time. So that's yeah. a large I, gap in between two, Terminator Two and Terminator Three. Yeah. <laughs> oh my! I swear, there's so many like sequels. Like once there's like a second movie that's like great, you know, like historically yeah. amazing. Once you get to the third one, it's mostly downhill from there, except for like the Star Wars trilogy and. It, it's basically a million. Star Wars is downhill the minute it started. What are you talking about? Oh my gosh. That's an L <laughs> take. No. That's an L no, take. Stop. No. 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 We're moving, no. On. We're moving on. <laughs> we're moving on. Yeah, I think everyone knows why uh, Return of the King is amazing. Great movie. Yeah. I, I don't think anyone can debate I, that. I don't even get into that. that. Really, okay. Really fine. Okay. Okay, 2004. Now, 2004 was a really great year for movies. Of oh, course, you know, there's Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And I think pick. there's other ones. Let, let me look. I, I know there's other great movies from this year. I, I mean, I, I've i seen, like, almost every single movie ever. So, like... <laughs> yeah. Of, of course, there was, you know, Eternal Sunshine. Eternal Sunshine. Kill Bill Volume 2, House of the Castle, Shaun of the Dead, Before Sunset, Mysterious yeah. Skin. Like oh, before Friday. sunset, before sunset. Fahrenheit 911. Nothing else matters. Sh 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 Shrek 2, Spider Man 2. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, no. Okay, Spider Man 2 and Shrek 2 are pretty amazing, but. No. Shaun of the Dead, Dawn of the that. Dead. Wow, that's, that's a good the, year, jeez. Napoleon yeah, Dynamite. Incredibles. Napoleon Dynamite's fun. Okay, wait, what okay, did you put? Okay, I put before sunset, which is, you know. I, it's before it, sunset. It's not my fifth favorite mm -hmm. of the year, but I have nothing wrong with it. Like, I love it yeah. a lot. I would say The Incredibles is better, yeah. but I also yeah. think that Before Sunset is an incredible movie, so yeah. Yeah. I respect it. I respect it. I'm not all, You can't go all wrong three with the trilogy. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think all three of them, in my opinion, are masterpieces. I love all of them. Probably, like, the greatest trilogy, I think, in my opinion. I think the second one, it, it has everything that's great in the first one, except for it's all, like, you know, new stuff. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's you know it's them like after like nine years and seeing them you know mature and grow older after the first one I think is great. It, it, is everything. Also, oh, sorry, God. Uh, basically, all I was gonna say is that everything that's great in the first one it, it translates here. Yeah. So. I mean, the conversations are also just yeah. like better written. Yeah. Uh, one one thing I love about it is that like it's this idea of like getting back with the one that got away and kind of like this idea of like kind of like the. The scenario we wish we got. Yeah, I like and that. Scenario, I like that. The scenarios, and, but also how that also kind of ends up, really towards the end, ends up kind of showing that that fantasy is really short lived because mm -hmm. of what ends up happening near the end with the car scene and how it doesn't really like work that way. I do. I, it kind of feels like La La Land in that sense. I, it, I, my, yeah. I, my brain is like on a La La Land high right now. Like, no, it does. I've watched Lala like... so many times, it's all I think about now. <laughs> but, oh uh, yeah. Uh, someone in chat said Prisoner of Azkaban. I have... Is well, that... we're on 2004. That's 2003. That's 2003. What even is that? It's, it's, it's like Potter? the third Harry Potter movie. 
So oh, sure. because I was like, where do I remember that name? And I've not seen a Harry Potter movie in my life, so I'm like, where, where do I remember that name? So like, <laughs> uh, okay, we should probably respond to the chat. I'm just gonna kind of speed run through, you know, the ones that are like. Oh boy, when are they gonna say Resident Evil Apocalypse? <laughs> 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 I haven't seen a Resident Evil movie in my life. Resident, Resident Evil, oh God. I, I it's really amazing. Like you don't like uh, Star Wars. Yeah, blasphemy. Nathan talks. I know, you know what? what I, this said. is this is a bad idea. I shouldn't have opened the window. Yeah. I should have just let it. Yeah, yeah. Just exactly. You should have just ignored it and moved on. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be the one that opens the most can of worms in this. In this <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I thought I was yeah, controversial, and you're like. Nah, yeah. the almost famous is mediocre. Star Wars <laughs> peaked at the beginning and you suck. It didn't peak that. at the beginning. I said it didn't peak at the beginning. Oh, it just never peaked. It just was always yeah, it just never it, it never was good. It never was good. Yeah. Every time I bring up a comic book movie days, it's gonna just like die like a little bit more. Um, other than like there's a few comic movies that I'm fine that I love, but it's mostly just like MCU or DCU where it's like Yeah. <laughs> Well, it it, so it depends be because the there, there's an a... side or the MCU side. You're just not neither. You're just hate yeah, both. exactly. I'm like <laughs> you just hate both of them. I'm just like you both suck. Stop competing. <laughs> oh god. Okay. Uh, okay. Ne- next one. Next one is actually a fun fact. A comic book movie. It's Batman Begins. I don't have oh, a absolutely. That. Unless there's something else that blows my mind in 2005. That's probably my favorite comic book origin story. <laughs> Or probably just origin story in general. To uh, it's not my favorite of 2005, but I actually do really like it. Um, oh, good. I actually have a better comic book movie for 2005, that being Sin City. Uh, which I, haven't I, like. it. Yeah. City? I haven't seen it. Sin City? I haven't seen it anymore. There's Cash, which from... Uh, my, my, I can never pronounce his name. But uh, we have... Oh, another comic book. There, 2000, 2005 was honestly peak for comic book movies. We have V for Vendetta also. <laughs> Oh, V for Data, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Descent, which isn't comic book, of course, but it's a movie. Uh, a History of Violence by David Cronenberg, which is also, I believe, a comic book movie, actually. But not oh, like, really? Not like I gotta it. say, though, not. It's kind of a little bit underwhelming, 2005. I haven't really found a movie that I love besides Violent Begins and um, V for Vendetta. Uh, Empathy for Lady Vengeance, yeah. Brokeback Mountain, Squid. The Squid oh. Yeah. Uh, of Brokeback course, Mountain. obviously. Of course, there's obviously the masterpiece that is Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> I obviously. Seen it. Obviously. I stopped watching Star Wars movies after The Phantom Menace. Like, I, I stopped my bins there, and I don't think I'm going to continue. <laughs> okay, well, The Phantom I, Menace I don't pre- blame you. Yeah, the prequels the are awful. Is pretty terrible. Well, I, I don't think the prequels... I think Attack of the Clones actually has a lot of good elements that just don't come together. Like, the score. No, shut up. You're, you're out of here. You're out of really here. Good. I'm kicking, I'm kicking right you out. I'm removing you. <laughs> <laughs> the score is not good. Okay, okay, Nothing about that movie is good. The Sith is not that bad. But like, I cannot, I couldn't even, in, I didn't even enjoy the original trilogy. So whenever I got to Phantom Menace, it absolutely broke me. <laughs> you enjoy the original trilogy. Okay. Yeah. The th- the thing is, the Revenge of the Sith is not that bad. It's just Wedding Crashers. <laughs> yeah, you... guys, Wedding Crashers above Batman Begins. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> V for Vendetta was 2005, not 2006. Yeah, we're on 2005 movie. right now. Oh, yeah. oh, never mind. You're correcting someone in the chat. Wait, have there been Should Disney I... prequels? Um, um, yeah, I think. I can't think of any. Uh, neither can I. Wait, there any? I. They were probably like straight to video. And like, oh, no yeah, okay. I should. I've seen every. Now that I've seen every Disney movie, I've thought about watching every Disney sequel. Yeah, I, oh. I I saw the Lion King sequel, like not the the uh, original Lion King, Simba's Pride or whatever it was called. I cannot. I I fell asleep, <laughs> hmm. which I never do while watching a movie. Yeah, I uh, think it's pretty. Uh, honest. Uh, I use... the prequels. Oh, sorry. Are, no, the Disney sequels are much worse than the prequels. Can someone list some Disney prequels? Because yeah. there's been a lot. Other than the uh, one we're about to get with the Lion, like you know that there's like a Lion King prequel coming out for the for the 2019 one. Oh god. Which is god. And it's directed by the director of Moonlight, which is really funny to me. Uh, that's, that's hilarious. That that's just funny. Choice. <laughs> Barry, Jenkins yeah. is, Barry Jenkins is ruining his career, even though he's <laughs> ruined like 
one honestly if anybody anybody that like you know directs an mcu movie like now their their career is like pretty much like obligated to them you're not getting work anywhere else Taika with tiki's over dude's gone (laughs) like it's done i mean I mean, he if he if he doesn't make any more Marvel movies, I think you know he could you know be good again. But let's be honest, he's he's probably just gonna. The stuff he has said surrounding, I haven't seen Thor four yet, but the stuff he said around it, say, you know, around it, has not been doing good for his career at all because it's kind of made him look really bad recently. So, oh, not. Disney sequels, as in anything, any Disney property. Oh, okay. In that case, there's been a lot of prequels, but. Yeah, it's kind well, of confusing a terminology. I feel like I, when I say Disney, I yeah, just Disney. yeah, I like I thought yeah. of like Disney animated movies that got like prequels. Yeah. Feel like. yeah. yeah. Okay, you want to move on like, to 2006? Okay, 2006. Okay, let let me pull those up because my phone, you know, phones. So I think one, there was one, one right answer here, and everything else is garbage. Unless well, yeah, obviously, it, it's cars. It's the right answer. <laughs> No, if you say Cars, my, Cars is like Micah's, what, casually, like, third favorite movie ever? <laughs> it's just like, yeah, of course it is. What do you mean? Yeah, I, it's his favorite movie. He doesn't explain it. He just puts it back. It's so weird. But Cars was, like, my favorite movie when I was, like, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's... My it's God, still the best movie ever made. So no, this. but seriously, like, okay, so you know how when you're a baby, you don't really, like, recognize things are going on as well? Like, you don't know when, like, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I knew Kinda. when Cars was on. <laughs> I knew when Cars was on. <laughs> you just knew. Yeah, I knew. I knew the song, uh, Life is a Highway or whatever. Life is a highway. And what's Not so funny is that, like, the, the, the song is very inappropriate, I think, when you actually, like, listen to the lyrics, so it's mm. kind of funny. Uh, no, um, no, no, 300 was not in 2007. It was in 2006, I'm pretty sure. Who? Wait, wait. What? Yeah, oh, someone... 300? I don't know. Oh, yeah, 300 was 2006. I didn't want... I didn't... So, what is your, your what is your pick for 2006, Gavin? Gavin, it was why cars. you switch to your phone? Yeah, I, I actually... Yeah, I probably should do that. I'm going to do that right now, actually. But well, well, while I'm doing that, I'm just going to say it was cars. Obviously. No, it was not cars. It was uh, not it cars. Was, no. Give me the right no, answer. You know what to I'm say. fine. It, fine. It's the prestige. It's yes, the prestige. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> More like I don't think prestige. I was I was just waiting. I, I knew you weren't gonna say cars, but if you were gonna say something like like what's his name over here? Four Brothers film who has the audacity <laughs> that Nacho Libre is the correct answer. <laughs> oh my god. It's it's the Abe, prestige. Thank Abe, you. Abe Thank knows you. what I'm talking about. Pan's Labyrinth is awesome. I would say it's better. Oh, than that's that. also a good movie. That's oh good. no, Pan's Labyrinth is not better than the prestige. This is a movie I've actually seen. It's not better. It is. I'm sorry, the prestige it's just not. is mediocre. I don't even remember a single thing that happened in it other than like Scarlett Johansson or yeah, it was Scarlett Johansson. Was it Scarlett Johansson's suicide? I don't remember who's suicide. <laughs> I don't oh, remember. Yeah. <laughs> suicide. <laughs> I remember you don't her, remember it. I remember her suicide, the ending, and a, like the whole like trick one of his tricks, right? That was, like, the biggest trick in the movie. I don't remember, like, what it was. But, like, I remember him like, doing, like, a trick. I don't remember what it was. Bro, like the, the mid mid-stage. Mid-stage. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like, it's not, though. It, it's it's amazingly crafted. The acting by Hugh Jackman and, you know, other guy. It was fantastic. Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Bale. You, 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 you guy. But... I thought it was Scarlett Johansson who committed suicide. Uh, I don't remember, to be honest. I thought it was. I, it's been a while since I've seen that, but from what I remember, it was incredible. So, And I, I feel like there's – I mean, Pan's Labyrinth was great too. So I feel like I would go Pan's Labyrinth or uh, – My Seed. favorite is Children of Men, actually. Oh, that's, that's not a bad choice, actually. Yeah. But I still prefer Pan's Labyrinth and um, – Pan's Labyrinth, I love a lot. So, like, I'm yeah. all for people who give it pit at number one. Yeah. Uh, there's also a documentary that I love uh, called Jesus Camp, which is a great documentary about, like, 
uh, indoctrination and like abusive uh, churches and stuff that I loved a lot. There's also Paprika, which I love. Babel. Paprika, I've never heard of that. It's a Japanese animated film by uh, Satoshi Kon. Yeah, that's his name. That's how you pronounce his name. Uh, Babel by uh, the director of Birdman. Hmm. Uh, we have The Host by Bong Joon-ho. The Departed. I'm surprised no one's mentioned the, the Departed yet. Oh, The Departed was this year, huh? That's cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh boy. <laughs> I'm hearing like... <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I know the quality kind of sucks, but uh, yeah, this Jack is the best thing I'm pretty two. much doing. Jackass number two uh, from 2006. That's another one I really enjoyed. Uh, oh my God. The Little Martin was a great choice. Film of Sunshine. Sunshine. Pretty oh. enjoyable. 2006 was a pretty great year for the most part. Like, we, we got some bangers. Hmm. I mean, yeah. It's the year I was born, so hey, you wanna you Dang. wanna test the <laughs> you wanna test the uh, the credibility of Gavin by talking about two thousand seven movies, and then if he comes in with his opinion like Bratz was the best two thousand seven movie. <laughs> okay, I probably should. Ex- I gotta like debate this with Nathan because his opinion's wrong, and I gotta you know correct him. So oh God, that's okay. two thousand seven. No, I got no. I gotta argue the first. I have to tell Nathan why he's wrong. Oh yeah, first. of course, of course. Yeah, I have to tell Nathan why he's wrong, and, and yeah. then, then we can move on. Then we can move on. First off, the, the, act, the acting in it is fantastic. Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman both give fantastic performances. Their rivalry is absolutely phenomenal. I think it's one of the you know the best rivalries in film history. You know, I'll, I'll say that. I, I think when it comes down to it, the tension and the way they build up everything, all the little hints that are built up to this fantastic third act, this amazing twist, it's just a brilliantly cra- crafted movie, you know? Yeah. Just brilliantly crafted on every single, you know, every single way. It's it's Kino in every sense of the word. <laughs> you know. I just, I don't see anything that you could, like, have against it. I, there are problems for sure, I think. It's a, maybe a little bit too short. I feel like it could have gone a little bit longer. I just but, um, don't remember a single uh, thing other than like the things I mentioned, and even then, it's something I may have done. It's called Johansson thing wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, I, so I can't, I can't uh, disagree. I can't disagree that uh, Daddy Bale. <laughs> Daddy Bale. <laughs> oh, Daddy Bale! Wow, <laughs> Daddy Bale. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call him that from now on. I ask again, oh. what did I get myself into? <laughs> oh my Bale's god! Goat. I mean, like Patrick Bateman and. The Dark Knight trilogy, and also Christian Christian Bale's the best part of like every movie he's in, other than apparently he was in Pocahontas, but I don't remember even what he played. <laughs> oh, I know, I hate that movie, but yes, yeah, Order of the Love Phoenix. Order of the Phoenix is Thunder. super underrated. I definitely gotta agree with you that that's like my favorite Harry Potter movie, besides the third one. So I actually I, I don't know the Presti- I would probably pick the Prestige, but Order of the Phoenix that's probably my number two. Uh, anyway, are we going to move on to 2007? Sure. Oh, okay, so let's see if you know. I don't freeze this time before I say it. Okay, the next one. Now, there are a lot of picks for this one. You know, of course, there's there will, will be Blood, which I haven't seen. So that's not going to be on here. There's, of course, Reddit. <laughs> well, it's already you know? not there, oh, There's so Reddit. many, yeah, you don't have to there's so many great mean. picks. You know, so many great picks. I decided to go with Swinney Todd and the Demon Barber on Fleet. Hey, you know what? That was literally my favorite movie of all time at one point. So like, I I have nothing really like to say that. Uh, That's I, I can think of like many movies that, like Thoroughly Blood, for example. You really should see that. Yeah, I need <laughs> I need to see that. There's a lot of movies I need to see that you've seen. So Ooh, Freedom Riders and Juno too. I haven't seen Juno or uh, No Country for Old Men. Uh, there's a so this is a movie that I don't even know if you guys have heard of. You probably have. Um, it's called, let me make sure I get it right, Four Months, Three Weeks, and Two Days, which is a great movie. Never heard oh, I think it. I've heard, I think I might have heard of that. It's pretty relevant right now since it's about abortion. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want to get political? Oh, boy. All right, let's get political. Let's no, do it. No, please don't. All please right. Don't. <laughs> Everyone say that. <laughs> but, like, but actually, like, it's a great movie. Ratatouille, I love a lot. I mean, to me, I don't even think anything could 
touch Ratatouille, but I think Sweeney Todd is more unconventional. So I can see why, like, I, I feel like m- movies that are really out there, you either love them or you hate them. Yeah. So you, it's more often that you're going to find yourself on the love side. Oh, you Whereas know, Ratatouille, yeah. I feel like there's a greater spectrum. You want know some movie you guys should really see? Uh, Smiley Face by Greg Araki. And that's actually on my watch list. That's oh, I, I actually really want to see that. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, well, that's uh, like my that's one of the best comedies out there. Uh, we also got Hot Fuzz, of course. We got uh, Zodiac. Hot Fuzz is good. Zodiac, uh, too. wow, that's a good. Uh, Death Proof, uh, Wreck. Dar, Dar, the, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong. Darjeeling Limited. Oh yeah, someone in chat said yeah, that. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna call this out. I. I have to call this out before we say anything more. The Darjeeling Limited is the best Wes Anderson. I'll take. I'll take. No, it's wow. not. Not even close. Not even close. <laughs> the best no Wes way. Anderson? I don't. I, don't, I think it's really weaker, but I don't like. I I can see the love for it honestly. Like it's very charming. It's very well shot. And well best Wes Anderson. Though. What about uh? For me, it's Moonrise Kingdom. For me, I don't it's know if that's a hot take, but. But I love Moonrise Kingdom also. I love all of Wes Anderson's movies. Like, I have nothing against really any of them other than maybe, like, Bottle Rocket would be my least favorite, but I still think it's, like, a good movie. Like, it's all right. The, it, it, the, it's, none of them are bad. It's just Darkwing Limited doesn't have anything that makes it stand out, in my opinion. I would, mid, I would say the, okay, I would stop say adding the, mid to everything, Abe. It's very annoying. <laughs> mid Rise mid- Kingdom. <laughs> I, I would say that Darjeeling Limited has uh, the great bond between the three main characters that really makes the film uh, really enjoyable, and also it ha- it still has like the great stuff that you usually see from Wes Anderson, like the cinematography, the direction, the, the comedy, all that stuff. So like, yeah, it's one of his weaker ones. He's it's certainly not as special as the others, but it's still got a lot of things to like. Yeah, uh, it, it it has things to like, and has like things that make Wes Anderson movies good. It's just not as good as the other movies. Yeah, you know because what it has isn't as good as the other one. So I don't I don't yeah. get why people like it so much. <laughs> Royal Tenenbaums is also a great choice. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the, that this one I can see, I can understand. Yes, yeah, it's uh, oh, Royal Tenenbaums is kind of near the bottom of my list personally, but I still really love it. Like I, Wes Anderson, I, it's hard for him to make a bad movie in my opinion. I can't see him ever doing it. Like so far, I've loved everything he's done. Mm. Or like enjoy well, everything. Well, yeah. well, I mean, it it could happen. It could. Never. I it, mean, it, all the next all directors can make bad movies, but like, uh, he's a director that I don't really. Anytime he has a movie coming out, I always expect greatness because he's proven to me that like he knows how to make a movie. Yeah. What Wes Anderson is a director. I just think of as like he can make really great films. He just doesn't make what I consider you know masterpieces. You feel me? So. Is it I mean, if, I feel like if you don't like his style, his his style can be a little bit repetitive, which is kind of like I don't know. I like his concepts a lot, but I feel like he doesn't branch out and try new things as often as I'd like him to. But I don't know if that's just me. To me, I feel like his style is not only really unique and interesting, and it creates a very but he's able to tell so many different unique stories with this style, okay. and he's For able sure, to like. That's appeal. And, like, of course, all directors have their consistent styles. Like, Tarantino has his dialogue, and Tarantino has his, like, pulp, pulpy, like, you know, guns blazing on stuff. And other directors have their thing. Wes Anderson is kind of, like, this cute, you know, style that I really love. Especially in, like, the Grand Budapest Hotel or um, Fantastic Mr. Fox and Moon, in, uh, Rushmore in all of his movies. You, like, you can say any of his movies are, like, your favorite, and I can't really, like, go against it. He's just like, you know, yeah, they're all very enjoyable for the most yeah. part. He's a very consistent director, for sure. Yeah, like yeah. That yeah, he's consistently making great movies and not, you know, masterpieces. And anyways, I, I, how do we get to Wes Anderson? Um, I don't know. I, I mentioned the Darjeeling Limited. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. It's a style thing. Oh, yeah. I've recently been getting into more Tarantino and Kubrick films. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what's... Oh, Twilight, 2008. Yeah, I mean, exactly. That, that was my pick. <laughs> you got me right there. You got me there. It's Twilight. Of course. If we thought Nathan was upset before. <laughs> uh, all right, Nathan, go. It's Twilight. How dare you? <laughs> so, like, so, uh, okay, so, like, my mom watches Twilight a lot. So, like, I have... It, it's so cringe and do it's such a cringe inducing experience. I know it's not your actual favorite, Gavin. No, it is my favorite. It <laughs> no, is my favorite. Favorite. It was your favorite. 
I know for a fact it's not your actual favorite. It is my favorite, though. No, no not Twilight. <laughs> David, get get on the Twilight bandwagon. It's an incredible movie. It is. It's a masterpiece. <laughs> is there a no, way actually, I'm... Your, your favorite is the Dark Knight is. because you're a film bro. <laughs> 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 oh, the Dark Knight was 2008? Yeah. Oh, this time. No, no. Okay, well, fine. I'll give you the actual one. It's Wally. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, over the Dark Knight. It's Wally. No, I'm kidding. It, it's it's the Dark Knight. Okay. Wally is kind it's, of um. How do I say this? Average at best. No, man, I love Wally. No, I, Wally's Wait, great. What are you talking about? My side. What I, <laughs> I can't. I can't agree with that, man. <laughs> Wally is like top five. Is it was it top? Is it top? I need to look at my Pixar ranking. Yeah, not, not top Wally. five. It's not top five. Maybe top ten. The it's one, top day, five for the one it's time Nathan five. actually has a regular opinion, it's against mine. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. my, uh, Gavin, here are some movies that I think are, I think you should watch. I guess. Okay. Synecdoche, Give New, up. Synecdoche, New York, is my favorite. Agreed. Movie. Yeah, I, um, I need to watch that. You've I seen do. you've seen Let the Right One In. Um, I have. It dear, wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't that great. Uh, dear, dear Zachary. Oh, um, oh yeah. Abe, uh, Abe makes videos. Also mentioned dear Zachary. Yeah. Um, burn, burn after reading. Uh, the wrestler Ponyo. Um, Ponyo, I've seen. I've seen Ponyo. Uh, okay, I don't well, think well. the Dark Knight can be beat from what I've heard. Nah. Oh, I'm sorry, but Ponyo too. I have the Dark Knight I don't think... three, so like I I have the Dark Knight over Dear Zachary, Burn After Reading, Wrestler, and Ponyo. So like, yeah. I mean, just, I mean, yeah. I think I think the Dark Knight should be over Ponyo. Just my opinion. Just yeah. My opinion. I, I I I think so too. I literally just said I have the Dark Knight over. I I, I know, but it's like it, you know. I think it should be though. I I think it just you know. I I think I just think it should oh, be. This, this is just more okay. So like, here's a here's a thing that I recommend. Uh, that so I have a funny story to tell. Uh, a friend of mine. It was like. 12 o'clock in the morning, and a friend of mine sent me something called Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog. Okay. <laughs> huh? Okay. It has Neil Patrick Neil Patrick Harris playing the main character. Oh. Um, and basically, like, it's like, it's made by Joss Sweden. And ah, oh, that, really? that's a recipe for success right there. <laughs> that's a recipe for success. And what's so funny is that, like, it's literally a parody on um like superhero movies, and then he'd go on to make like the thing it's parodying. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's even funnier. Oh but, like, man, I, I really want to check that movie out now. And like he uh, uh he like it's about like this guy trying to get this girl. And like, it's like a musical weird like thing. I it's I, a musical. Yeah, like it's his sing along vlog. So like he sings most of the entire movie. Man, you really throw me out for a loop year. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, hey. Yeah, Bronson. Yeah, 2008 was a great year. I'm gonna give a lot of movies. Uh, Benjamin Button. That's actually a really underrated movie. It's, it's yeah, I really, right. actually really like that film. I it's like right. it. I loved it when yeah. I first saw it, and it's kind of like I didn't find it all that memorable overall. So like, mm. ASDF movie is cringe. At least like yeah. in the beginning, like. I, I I enjoy some of them, but like for the most part, that series is really cringeworthy. And like that movie's like ACF movie is like if you want a better time, if you cannot find a better time capsule of the humor of like two of the early two thousands or like that time period, <laughs> then ACF movie. No, it does right, not ha- at all. Are, are you guys talking about Harold and Kumar? No, uh, ASDF movie. Do you even oh. know? What ASDF? The, the Kumar escape from the Come movie on. series, the 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 little short video series on YouTube that was like, it's where like a ton of memes honestly came from, kind of like like oh. the, you've probably seen like something on the internet regarding it, but like, that stuff is like, if you want a better, if you want the best time capsule for the humor of, of like the of like, two thousand eight to like two thousand twelve. That's your perfect, perfect thing to watch, because it does not age well at all. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. I'm gonna change my pick for 2003. Uh, it's Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Really? Um, You've never heard yeah. of Harold and Kumar? 
I probably have, but like Harold and yeah, it, Kumar. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I watched. I, I watched I that have, movie with my friends like late at night, and we all wanted to go to White Castle afterwards. <laughs> I know the, the first fast food restaurant. Not, I haven't seen the movie, but I've seen this on like Letterbox. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I, I've I've heard of this. Okay, um, so uh, I'm a little bit sad to go to 2009 because I know the pick I have is not going to be the one you have. Uh, 2009. Let me go to my 2009 list. Because I, I have a lot of movies. I, I love, I know quite a bit of movies from 2009 also that I would like. I, I, I just know he's not going to pick it. Okay, what, um, have you seen Mary and Max? No, but I want to. That's the movie that's been on my radar. It, looks it really is cool. so freaking good. It's so good. And okay, I, there we go. I know it's he's bad. not going to have it, but I know he's not going to have uh, it. Okay, so my pick for 2009. Uh, obviously, it has to be... Um, what's a really terrible movie from the 2009 that I can make a joke out of being the best? Uh, I love you, Beth Cooper. G-Force. G-Force, <laughs> yeah, that was my pick. G-Force. <laughs> I remember, I I remember watching that in class. Like, I remember it was like people went on a field trip okay. and they watched that. <laughs> well, G Force is like it was lit when you were like a little kid. It's just like the best thing ever. Well, I didn't see it until I was in like watch. eighth grade. So, Ooh, eighth grade? You watched it in eighth grade? I watched it when I was like six years old. It was not. <laughs> it was not my choice. Ooh, Watchmen. <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, Watchmen's not that good. The I, I, comics I, I, better. So I wait, what, what did you pick then? Okay, I picked Fantastic Mr. Fox. Based. That's oh, mine too. You know what? That's a good choice. I personally was a little bit underwhelmed by that film, just because everyone told me it was better than all the other Wes Anderson, and it's to me it's under. <laughs> yeah, but but like, no. I still think it's a great movie. I still think it's really great. Um, my okay. Well, at least you think that. I, I don't I think, think it's better really than like every Wes Anderson. Yeah, Sorry, I think it's very distinct. I I'm think it's his best. Course. Better than every. I just think that the climax is pretty underwhelming. I liked when we were in that little village. I didn't like when they went to the human stores. I just kind of felt like it took me out of it. I wish they had just stayed there and created a conflict in there because I thought that was really cool. But then they like when they invaded the actual human world. I just thought it was kind of boring. But that's just kind me. Of boring at all. Like I was when I first watched it, I did actually. But then like I rewatched it, and now it's like one of my favorite animated movies of all time. Hmm. So like it, okay. it's one that. You, like you start noticing a lot more like it's a very insanely well crafted movie. Yeah. Like you start seeing more things. Like it, it it's what a kids movie should be. Yeah. With both I its was... style and its like storytelling, it's not just it doesn't like you know dumb things down or anything like that. And it tells some it has some very mature themes and ideas. Hmm. Um. Oh. Okay. Hey, I need. I want to mention this, Abe. Uh. Yes, you are right. Enter the Void is awesome. Uh, uh you should, I I I don't I don't it's this one uh a uh, and and uh Inglorious Bastards of course uh um, I should really see that movie. Uh, I've Inglorious been Bastards movie. isn't as good as Fantastic Mr. Fox. Well, I, I not, don't think so either. I'm, good. Just saying, I'm just saying that like it's a you know one of my favorites. Yeah. Well, so Mary uh, Max uh, So Mary and Max is is one of my favorite movies ever. To me, I think that you, I think you feel like everyone should be able to see that movie. It's not that indie, but it's not popular. It's an Australian stop motion movie. So, but it's it's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I've heard of it. I've okay. wanted to watch it. I've wanted to watch it for a while. I, I gotta. Yeah, but I, the I, thing I, is, it's so dark and like it's it's so distinct. I've never seen any movie like it. The stop motion is almost more interesting and unique than Fantastic Mr. Fox. Which is surprising to me because, well, I never thought it would be possible, right? Because, but if you just see some clips from it, everything is so like, it almost looks like they put dark soot on all of the character designs, and everything is so grimy, and like, it's just gorgeous. It's one of the most visually unique movies I've ever seen. Isn't it? it I've heard it's pretty depressing. Depressing. It is. Like it's very... almost R rated. It's PG thirteen, but it's almost R with the with the concepts it tackles about like morality and what makes life worth living. It's like really yeah. it's so good. Uh, well, my oh, type yeah. of movie. 
Oh, yes, and you should watch uh, Antichrist by Lars von Trier. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> and <laughs> Did someone really put... Okay, Abe, The Secret of Kells, Coraline, The Hangover, and Avatar. What is ah. this thing? It's not Coraline, like Avatar. I, I There's all... Wait, wait, where is this? Where is this? This is Hold the fourth to last. Oh, I see it. I can, I can get behind Avatar. Coraline. I can get behind Coraline, nothing. I, I haven't seen Secret of Kells, but Avatar and Hangover, nah. I, mean, I, I, I couldn't even finish Avatar. I couldn't finish the movie. It was so boring. I basically I had to finish it because it was in class. But like, I think I think the Secret of Kells and Coraline are just so much better than Avatar, to me. Coraline's I great. Like, that's a really good I don't think movie. I've ever heard of The Hangover. But... Okay. I guess I should explain, you know, like, what I think about Phantasm, Phantasm Mr. Fox. I don't, you know, love it as much as Nathan does, but I don't hate it like Olivier does. So I'm kind of in the middle here. I think it's a real, I think it's a really great, fun and enjoyable movie, and I like the characters. I like seeing them, but it, it doesn't really strike me as like a masterpiece. You know, it doesn't have that thing about it that you know has it go from a really great, enjoyable movie to like excellence. You know, that sounds I, like it's just great. <laughs> I don't uh, hate it. I, I love how we just like. Because I don't love it either, but like I love how we didn't mention Up at, at all. <laughs> Just the oh, well, Up that. I think is Up is is pretty great. I mean, I feel like people who say that it peaks at the beginning are right, but yeah, I also don't it, think it's it's. Some people tell me like it peaks at the beginning and it stays good, which is what I think. And some people think uh, some people thinks some people think that it peaks at the beginning and then never reaches that height ever I, again. I I that's that's kind of how I feel about it. The beginning it peaks and then the rest is just like it. But, but there's so much. There's so many like little details. Like when when he reads her, the book, like the book of their past adventures. To me, that's just as good. To me, I don't know. I just, okay. Yeah, I I just find it funny that like I thought about it. It's like this is the only time we haven't really mentioned a Pixar movie other than Incredible Wars. Yeah. Well, actually, was I was gonna just, mention it. I was gonna mention. Yeah. it. I was about to. Which, but yeah. Anyway, I guess we went to 2010. Oh, now he's there. I'll wait for Gavin. <laughs> yeah, to keep up, Gavin. <laughs> 2010. Let's see. Oh, my list is wrong. Why does it say that? It should be uh, the other movie that. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. You movie. know what? I'm just gonna move to my phone. I'm doing it now. I'm gonna get over with. I'm getting tired of this. This is for getting annoying. I thought you already did that. Okay. So I have se- I have seen almost every Pixar movie except for three. I don't think Up makes my top fifteen. Yeah, me neither. Up doesn't make the top like. If it makes it doesn't top even. 20, it's by default. It's by default. <laughs> yeah, Abe. Abe knows what's up. Abe knows what's up for two thousand ten. Abe knows. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, two thousand ten is. Uh... Okay. What the heck? Oh, God, this is wrong. Yeah, let's find out. Oh wait, uh, hold on, hold on. Let me go to 2010 list. Uh, because there are Fred the movie, of course. <laughs> the Karate Kid remake, which is just so good. Oh For boy. Real. To be honest, like, what would I rate that? Karate? I I didn't even hate that. It was like mediocre. <laughs> I thought it was just useless. I don't know why yeah, you would take yeah. an amazing movie and just make it worse. I haven't even seen the okay. original. I just I watched. The, I. Karate, I w- that was one of the movies I watched the remake before I even I haven't even seen the original Karate Kid yet. Really? I, but like I ended up seeing the original back when I was in back when I was little. Because it was like one of the few it was, it was like a movie we had that we just always play for some reason. Mm. That's, so, that's wait, uh, Gavin, what did you put for 2010? Okay, let let me pull it up on my you know my laptop because I was using my phone to like look at the list. Yeah, so... it's gonna end up being social network because. Gavin is the film bro. <laughs> okay, so obviously for two, two, 2010. So obviously 2010 is Iron Man 2. I mean. <laughs> no, stop. No, no, man. That is what the people who don't like the MCU say the MCU is like. <laughs> terrible movie. Terrible. Yeah, it, is. it really is. It's so bad. It, I, okay, never. Okay, actually though, it, it's the social network, of course. <laughs> it is. Well, competition. Like I was... Uh, you should see Black Swan or In Sundays. Like, or in the, the, I, I probably, the social network script and 
like energy is unmatched by anything in 2010. Mega Mind is a fantastic movie. Don't get me wrong, but the social network is just like it's like I it's amazing. I don't know how else to say it. It's the the script is unbelievable. The acting is incredible. And the way the the story is actually structured with like a double lawsuit in the beginning and then it uses that to build the past. That's like absolutely brilliant. There's nothing like I don't think anything could top it in 2000. No, there isn't. The but only I can, movie I, I had that was even <laughs> like, uh, uh, Nathan, stop talking over me. What the heck, man? What the heck? Just stop Nathan's talking. Like, oh, I hate the social network. It's the worst movie. Here, let me show you this 3.1 no, like, average on Letterboxd. This is actually the best movie of the year. I love social network. I do. Okay, so what's okay. your amazing opinion? This, you're not a film bro like us. <laughs> anyway, um, um I have three movies over it, actually. Oh, God. Uh, Black Swan being my favorite. In Sundays and uh, The Ghost Rider. So, yeah, I uh, uh, The Ghost Rider is one that everyone should see, and, like, barely anyone who ha- has seen it. Anyway, what are you saying, Gavin? Okay, so basically I was going to say the only other movie I had even close to it was Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Which shows you the type of taste I have. <laughs> oh, that's a great movie. And yeah, uh, uh, Ghost Rider. On the other hand, <laughs> yeah, like it's all right. Ghost Rider. Wait, I thought Rider. you said Ghost Rider. Do you mean like no, the two thousand seven Ghost Rider movie Writer. with Nicolas Cage? <laughs> Writer, the Roman Polanski movie. Um, I was about to say. The then Ewan you would add McGregor, a decent take. Ewan McGregor and, P- and Pierce Bro- Bro- Brosnan. Scott Pilgrim versus the mid? Oh, my God. Stop with the mid jokes. They're not funny anymore. <laughs> They're not mid. funny. Scott Pilgrim. I'm surprised. We, I'm, surprised I'm proud of everyone in that we haven't mentioned Inception at all until now. That is I'm so not. funny. That is so yeah. funny. It's a great um, movie. It's just not as good as The Social Network. Yeah, like, or, every, or like most time, that's like world. everyone's favorite. I know, but I really, I have no interest in that movie. I watched it once and I liked it. I, I thought it was very interesting conceptually, but I also think it's just not the best movie. I just, yeah. I, I was always oh. underwhelmed by it. I, I love it a lot. It's like it's, a, but it's not my favorite of the year. I don't I even know if it's like top it. three Nolan. Yeah, I don't think so. I, don't I think, think so it's top three known for me, but like it's not like Memento and Dark Knight to me are way better. Memento to me is like the blow my mind movie that I just like. I I honestly think it's incredible. It's definitely his best one that I've seen. Yeah, Interstellar I think is probably also better than Inception. To be honest, I, I no, debate that. No, I don't. I wouldn't say that. I would say uh, Interstellar is like a good movie, but nowhere near his best. Scott Pilgrim's Toy Story 3, How to Train Your Dragon. Wow, this was a year of good animation. Holy cow. Yeah, for no, part. right? Like, you know, it just was. And, and I decided to pick, you know, uh, the the easiest, you know, one that wouldn't make everybody mad at me. Oh, no. <laughs> Social, Network. Social Network is just the best pick, 100%. And it's a great movie. Like, I, it's like my fourth favorite of the year. I mean, considering that you've seen a lot of them, I guess it's like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. went to war on me after a while as the story unfolded. Yeah, I mean, to me, I just think that even in the most boring parts of the plot, the the gimmick is so brilliant that you just can't look away. Like, does that it's, make sense? It's the best gimmick of all time in any movie. Yeah. That's why. So I just feel like the story is so well written, but then even at the like low parts of the story, like when he's trying to piece everything together in the middle, it's a little bit not boring but maybe not as good the gimmick still makes me interested in it so it doesn't matter what i'm watching really <laughs> does that make sense unless it's outright bad which it isn't so yeah. mental is pretty good yeah like i i haven't seen it in like a while um but yeah okay 2011 let's see uh okay. I, don't even know, I don't know what you're i, I mean is, I, I I can think of a ton of great movies, but I don't even know what your pick even like would be. No. Okay, so it's a pick that like now I really like the Harry Potter movies. Like I okay. like them a lot. Huh. 
and I really love the cl- conclusion. So I picked Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part Two. I haven't even seen it. Like I can't really. <laughs> I haven't seen a Harry Potter movie in my life. You should really watch really? The Tree of Life. Oh, the Tree I of need Life to watch Tree. Like, there's so many movies I need to see. Yeah, and Drive is kind of boring. Not gonna lie. Mm-hmm. Here's a very... Drive. Here is a movie that like no one talks about, and I think people should see it. Uh, Weekend. Uh, it is a um, gay romance film that I really love. I think more people should see. Yeah, Midnight in Paris. Uh, oh, I have seen Midnight in Paris actually. It's just not as good as Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. Yeah, I would actually. Uh, Deathly Hallows Part Two is is probably my pick. The Tree of Life is also really good. Um, yeah, I would probably say Deathly Hallows Part Two. I probably agree with Gavin in this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen. The it, thing so is, I've can't... always been going. Uh, sorry, what were you gonna say? I was saying I, can't... I haven't seen it, so I can't like agree or disagree. Yeah, you should. The see thing it. is, I. Oh, yeah. sorry. I keep interrupting. There. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> the thing is, I keep like, what what I keep doing is like, I keep going to Dominic for like mo- new movies to watch. I should just start going to Nathan's Letterbox this time from, from now on because there's so many. Yeah. I mean, like, if you want old, if you want older movies, go to Dominic. If you want newer movies, go to me because I've seen a lot of like underground indie films from like the past like century. But if you want ah. more older movies, then you're go- you're gonna want to go Dominic. Mm. He's, that's one that is one issue, and that's I need to see a lot more older films. Yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, so- under- yeah, I'm kind of under one for 2000 uh, for 2011. I think that Deathly Hallows Part Two and Tree of Life, pretty much. Yeah. Well, don't worry, we're going to the best year of film, which is obviously 2012. So. 2012. I Nin- to me, 1984 is the best year of film. Mm. Or at least the oh, the oh. films that defined film, those are the there's the most of them. But anyway, conversation for another day. Uh, let me get my okay, so okay. let's see. So 2012, you know what what is it gonna be? I wonder. I really wonder. It's obviously The Dark Knight Rises. I, I don't think there's anything else. You know <laughs> what else came out this year? I don't know. What other movies uh, came out in 2012? Uh, uh, um, oh, oh. Like, for oh. Bad. Ah, okay. I Olivia get gets now. it. Olivia <laughs> gets it. <laughs> Olivia gets it. Please just say it. Just say it. Get it over with. The amazing poem. Eileen. Uh, uh, na, na, na. At this moment, you mean everything. Okay, it's the first one. Daddy. Oh, that's a, da, da. <laughs> totally. To be honest, perks like got worse for me the more I saw I'm not it. disagreeing with that. You saw it after me. So. I did. I did. I did. I saw it afterwards. Um, I need to fix my... No, uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower is the second, third best movie, I would say, of all time. No. I, have, I, I keep going back and forth between The Matrix and Perks, but uh, yeah, that's, yeah, I would say Perks is probably second. I, I, I don't agree with that Matrix take, but I don't care because, you know, it's, it's, it's Perks of Being a Wallflower. Let's about it. Let's just, let's just bond over our agreements. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. <laughs> my two favorite movies are actually from this year. So. Yeah, yeah and like oh. I think neither of them are the best. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, Nathan. <laughs> we we know know that that are. Are. A terrible movie. Okay. I regret. <laughs> I regret inviting you to this. Uh, Perks is good. Perks is fun. Like oh, I, well, I, Abe, I, Abe already predicted. He's like, I know Nathan hates it. He just knows. Per, uh, oh, Perks god. is good. Uh, I like it. It's fine. It. I think it is a tad like safe, I guess, and I. It's not the best movie to handle suicidal, uh, depression. Like it, 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 it could do a lot better. But yeah, it's overall. But it's decent it's movie. not just about suicidal depression. I mean, it's not just oh, about that. Well, yeah, yeah, but like, I've realized that the director is kind of just known for like making very safe versions of topics that could easily be should be probably handled a tad bit more. Seriously, like like Wonder or Dear Evan Hansen. See, I don't like Wonder or Dear Evan Hansen. Those kinds of movies to me are so in your face. Like, yeah, like oh my god, I have a disability. Like, obviously yeah. it's a problem. Yeah, and I'm not saying that it's not, but uh, it's just so like 
in your face, yeah. and it's kind of not fun to watch. But Perks is the best he's done from what I I haven't even seen Dear Evan Hansen, and I'll probably never see it. Um, but like Perks yeah. is good. We we had a massive discussion yeah, of this, bad. and it turned out very bad. It, yeah. it went very bad. Uh, my favorite is The Hunt. By Thomas Winter Winterberg. Ooh, that's a great pick. Yeah, um, I, I have it, to see that. So. Yeah, it is very. It's it's hard to recommend because of its subject matter, because it's like, it, because it's literally about like child molestation and stuff like that. But it's so well done and interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, The Master by T- Paul Thomas Anderson, which is another one I love. Yeah, D- Django Unchained, Moonrise Kingdom. Yeah, Moonrise Kingdom to me would be the. I mean, obviously, nothing can come over my third favorite movie other than the top two, but mm-hmm. uh, but I would say the closest movie is Moonrise Kingdom. That's also probably a top fifty movie for me. So, uh, so yeah. That, yeah, so Django Unchained as well. So Django is like one of those movies where I really loved it up until like the last fifth or like fourth, because the last. Wait, have you all seen Django? You both seen uh, I have not. I, I haven't. There's oh. so many movies I need to see. Okay, that's fine. I, that's fine. I, I just I didn't want to spoil anything. So the last fifth to me is so like it contradicts because the action is really smart in the beginning, and then at the end it just becomes kind of dumb. And I don't want to get too specific for spoilers, but for me that's just why I didn't I couldn't get into the last ending, but. I think overall it's an incredible movie. It, it doesn't bother me that much, like how the ending goes. I really enjoy it. I enjoy the entire two hour uh, and like forty six minutes of the movie. I believe that's the runtime. It peaks with the scene with Leonardo DiCaprio and where uh, at the table scene. That is the like the best scene. In the yeah, percent probably. And uh, when you see it, Gavin, you'll definitely know what we're talking about. Another movie. I, I, I want to, another movie I want to talk about because I know neither of you have seen it is Starlet by the director of the Florida Project, um, which is one that I think more people should see. You also got Killing Them Softly, which is pretty good. Um, yeah. Now, I guess we should get the elephant out. I guess we should address the elephant in the room, should we? The fact yeah. that I don't like it's such a beautiful day. <laughs> uh, yeah, we definitely need to address this because it, it's, it's, I find it so funny that my two favorite movies are like movies that you just find okay. I find that hilarious. <laughs> or no, I, I, I've I've come to like the realization that I simply don't like it's such a beautiful day. It's not in this I think it's okay. I simply just don't care for it. So I have not seen this movie. Okay, ever. well you're wrong. I feel uh, like I don't it's okay I'm, guys. It's okay if you all have our opinions. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah. say that no, like, no, no. I'm sorry. It's an L take. That's an L take. You has, have to like it. It has and it's my problem. I, I don't like Don uh Hetzervelt really at all. He just feel he he's so like I I don't think the movie's as deep as everyone like makes it out to me. I've seen movies with the same exact themes done better. Mm-hmm. And the anim like it just doesn't feel I don't like I remember when I first watched it, I was like, this is like Something felt like it was missing when I first watched it, and like just the more I think about it, the less I really care at all about like the experience I had. Well, it, it, I, I think. Sorry, what were you gonna say? And like, I don't think it's. It didn't speak to me in any way, and I don't. It felt kind of. I hate calling movies pretentious, but it honestly felt like. It it didn't live up to the. It's a movie that like doesn't it, it try it like it wants to have this like it it puts itself on this high it, it puts itself on this high pedestal but doesn't really like meet that high pedestal it feels like like in the end I I, I understood everything he was trying to say and didn't really get anything out of it it didn't make me think about anything it was just like oh yeah that's that yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh yes, yeah, Spago, Spagu, you missed a lot. We we're, at, <laughs> you, yeah. we're already at we're at 2012 right now, buddy. Yeah, we're and moving we're exactly. Like, yeah, you missed you missed a bit, my guy. Okay, but what one thing I have to say after like talk about like what Nathan was saying is, I I can understand maybe the themes aren't like the deepest or the most complex, but I feel like what makes them so good is the way they're presented to us. Like I feel like the way. It articulates it throughout the movie. I feel like is what makes it so good. That's at least my opinion. 
Yeah, I've noticed, Nathan, that you don't really like, uh, I feel like you value more like themes rather than presentation. I've, uh, I've kind of noticed that. Because not I, really. Your opinions, I don't know if that's just. No, it's more that I, like, I value the idea that I can, like, one, I like to be able to actually, like, it's less that I value themes over presentation and more that because presentation very much matters. I can think of many movies, and it's one of my main issues with It's Such a Beautiful Day is that I don't think the presentation was all that, like, insightful or as thought-provoking as it really felt like it was trying to be. It, it, the way it was presented was another issue for me. I didn't think the narrator was all, like, interesting. Uh, I didn't think, like... The animation was good, but... At the same time, I didn't find anything about the characters that were really like interesting. Gavin, you look like, so upset right now. You you just look like you're about to go. <laughs> He's gonna go to my house. Like, it, it's not that I, his presentation very much matters, but I like it whenever a movie makes me think. And I don't think it's such a beautiful day really did that for me, or like stuck. It didn't stick with me at all. Huh. Well, uh, well you're wrong. But okay, we'll move on to the next one. Moving on to 2013. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we're going to move on to a year that wasn't very good. So, Okay, I don't know if I've ever seen many movies from this year. <laughs> Me, who likes seeing like, every movie ever. <laughs> I know, like, and still has wrong opinions about like every movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. what's your favorite, Gavin? What, so what okay, was so the next, the next one is Before Midnight, which is my favorite of the Before Trilogy. And I think when it comes down to, I, I know Nathan's already going to disagree with me on this. So I'm just going <laughs> to, I'm just going to talk about it before we have this discussion. Uh, I love, the, of course, the dialogue is fantastic. I think the cinematography might be the best out of the trilogy. I love the ending. I love how real it feels. Like how it tackles love is so, you know, realistic and interesting to me. And this idea that it's not going to be perfect and there's always going to be struggles along the way, and to always, you know. Push forward and through them, I, I think is great. Yeah, I love it. It's my favorite. Ball three. He's uh, making mid jokes again, Abe. For, for oh me. my god. I, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put you in a timeout if you keep okay, going. You did kind of want to not funny. The time, he didn't Especially even when it's a wrong there. opinion. <laughs> okay, so before midnight, I'll be honest, I've grown to appreciate it in ways. I love but it. You don't like it, you just appreciate it. You just no, I it like it. Yeah. I love I love what it's communicating. The way it did it, I feel kind of felt. It's really good for like the first two acts, and then for some reason, it just felt like the fight that they were having really just didn't work for me. Like the conflict felt, the conflict didn't feel as interesting as like before sunset's conflict, especially. Um, and then you had the ending, which I really did not like, because it felt very much like. I don't know. The ending felt like a cop out almost. It, 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 you know, like I almost kind of wish they did break up at the end instead of the weird kind of like making up weird like joke thing, where like it just felt so weird the way it ended. So it made so like it made it made sense for the first two to end the way they did, but it didn't make sense for that one to end the way it did. It almost felt like he was trying to like force a happy ending. Almost. Okay. Okay. So let me explain this because I I don't th I I'm not saying this to be like like one of those people, but I actually don't think you like got what the ending was trying to say. So I I'll try to like you know explain it somewhat. So basically, the whole point of the ending was this whole idea of how like there's always going to be hardships and like struggles with love along the way, and how there's always going to be issues with it. However, the however you still have to like you still want to try to you know get through them because it can still be beautiful and still be great, but there's always going to be problems with it along the way. So I guess I feel, I feel like the whole point of it was this idea that love is flawed and that it's not always going to be perfect. I, I, I think that was like the whole point of it. I feel like the second one did a better job at communicating that idea with the whole scene, with the whole, with the car scene and with the idea of like, in the second one, it's kind of like this idea where like they have this almost fantastical, this, it, they have this like black and white, look at love and black and white look at you know life and then that car scene kind of it's kind of like that re reality like coming in in an interesting way where it, it just felt a lot 
less forced and a lot less. It, it felt more like a natural thing that was happening. Well, and before midnight, it kind of came off as a little forced with the way it was done. What do you guys uh, think about other movies like Prisoners and like David over here, Prisoners and Wolf of Wall Street and Her? Like, why dude, you Her is my favorite of the year. Her is my favorite of the year. I feel like you would like that movie. I don't know why. That just seems like a you movie. <laughs> um, Inside Lou and uh, Davis, um, Under the Skin. Not Prisoners? Wind, oh, Wind, oh, Wind Rises, Blue Jasmine, Prisoners, 12 Years a Slave. Short Term 12, The World's End, Tale, to the Tale of Princess Kaguya, Enemy, yeah. The Wolf of Wall Street. I have a lot of movies from 2013. I swear, like. there's so many movies that I actually have to like see now after like doing this whole thing. Yeah, and I know there's a lot more I gotta watch. So wait, which one? Uh, which one? Have you seen Prisoners or uh, Wolf of Wall Street? No, I've not. I, I need. I need to. I I haven't though. Frozen. The other Frozen. two like content. The other two contenders for me for this one was About Time and The World's End, and that was pretty much it. Ooh, About Time. That's a great one. It, it's good. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> it's the fine. World's End is great. I love The World's End a lot. Um, uh, I I yeah. do think I would probably pick About Time. But uh, before mid- I haven't seen Before Midnight, so I can't really say anything. But uh, I have I seen know. Before Sunset and Before Sunrise. I just mm-hmm. haven't gotten around to finishing yeah. the trilogy. Uh, but Frozen and and um, uh, what did I say? Why can't I not remember what I just said? Frozen and <laughs> yeah, Frozen and About Time. I would say. Okay, I'm gonna look in the chat here and see what L takes people are you know putting in here. Oh, good good day to you, gentlemen. Good. Hey, Honor. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Honor Osmond too. <laughs> okay, what other all takes are in here? I need to find some. Thor the Dark Thor World the... was actually a great movie. Oh, my. No. No. I have not no. seen it in a while, and I might have skipped through it a bit, but I'll no, take. I'll no, take. No, no. I'm not sure how I feel about that there. Thor the my, Dark my World. My pick for like... 2013, Frozen. I mean, may- maybe if you haven't seen, like, any other movies from that year. Yeah. <laughs> Like Frozen is like not good. <laughs> it, it it's it's okay. It it well, I mean, it's kind of fun. It's entertaining, but it's like there's so many other movies. You know, there's so many other it, great ones. That you just if it stayed, see. can I feel like like Frozen is really good in like its first half, and then the rest of the movie kind of just like one. I think Let It Go is like one of the worst songs in the soundtrack. <laughs> I do think the reprise of For the First Time in Forever and the first, like, the original is is amazing. I think there's a lot of good dramatic weight. I do think Elsa's a terrible character and yeah, a like, bad twist villain, but I don't have that many problems with it. It's one of my favorite revival era Disney films. Uh, for Hans. Films, I need to see Gravity. Hans. To... Oh, yeah, Hans. Hans. Yeah. Hans is a great character, though. He's a great character before the twist. He's a terrible twist villain. He, but he's a. I just kind of ignore the fact that he's a villain. I just enjoy him as a character in the beginning, and then him being a twist villain ruins anything that happened beforehand. Because like on rewatch, maybe yeah. There, there's no like. I don't like usually when you're having a twist villain. There's at least like some type of foreshadowing. Everything that Hans does before that moment is completely against the idea that he's a tw- that he's a twist he's a twist villain. Yeah. But I, uh, I Hans is a mid I, character. I think the only thing that really seriously contradicts his character for me is when he goes to Elsa and he says, "I couldn't let them kill you." Uh, because I there's a scene where people are always referenced where she he's at the ice castle and he's like, "Don't be the monster they fear you are," because I think that's mostly just to convince Anna because she's right there. So he has to convince Anna that she, he's still a good person because otherwise he loses control of Arendelle. So the shot where he tries to save her is actually the shot where he shoots the chandelier and makes it come crashing down. So I think things like that are a little bit give, – people should give a little bit more credit to. But, yeah, the scene in the prison where he's, like, consoling her, I'm like, that's that could have just been removed. Okay, okay more L-Tanks. 
any anytime he like acts like he loves Anna, it almost doesn't feel like he's faking it. Like it almost feels like he's like the scene wherever he like falls into the water and like he smiles. That kind of gives off a different like now like it almost contradicts everything that happens later on because it's like well then did then like it it, it feels like the way his character. His character pulls a whole 180, and usually when you're doing a twist villain, you need to have, like, some type of, like, when you make a twist, there needs to be some type of build-up to it. His twist is just like, yeah, <laughs> he's, he's evil now. Mm. Uh, okay, I gotta bring this up. Someone picked 2000 Man of Steel for 2013. <laughs> and I have to disagree with that. I have to. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, I, as someone that, like, enjoys the DCEU... Man of Steel is like not it. Yeah, listen to Honor. I like Honor. I like Honor's idea. That's the stop talking. Let all of your talk about with Whiplash already. Uh, well, who, who said Don't Whiplash? Coming. Is good? Who coming said, Honor. Don't worry. Who Assuming said Whiplash that you have be my Whiplash. Who said Whiplash was gonna be my favorite? It better be Gavin. It is. I know it is. It's like your third favorite movie or something. Like your fourth, not third <laughs> no, movie. it's not. It's, it's not. Like top 12. Now, let's see. What's a terrible movie it's from 2014 that I can think of to make you guys mad? God's Not Dead. It's in 2014. 2014. What's this? <laughs> okay, let's see. What I, okay, just, just, you know what? Tell me your pick for 2014 before I lose my mind. Okay, it was. it's obviously when Marnie was there. It's not. <laughs> That's not even a Fine, it's choice. Whiplash. Fine. It, it, it actually you. is Whiplash. Thank you. Mm, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, like, Whiplash is awesome. Like, I'm... Whiplash is awesome? Yeah. That's Did mad. Did disagree on an opinion? Except it's not my favorite of the year. <laughs> What's your favorite I, I... of the year, then? Let me, let me hear your favorite, okay, your uh, favorite my... of the year. Oh, I, have three mov- I have three movies above Whiplash. Three? Yeah, I don't have any movies above Whiplash, not just for the year, for of all time. Yeah, um, my favorites are the Grand Budapest Hotel, Mommy. No, 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 no. Elte, Elte, I disagree with this in every way, shape, or form. Wait, the Grand Budapest Hotel, I can kind of see, but Mommy, what? Why do you like Mommy? You don't know? Do you have you even seen Mommy? Yeah, isn't that the? Maybe I'm thinking something else. It's the one with. uh, with, it's uh, Nicholas Cage. No, no, no. No, I'm thinking of another one then. Yeah. It's the Xavier. It's, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, oh, it's, oh, it's not the one from 1999. It's, 2000, it's 2014. It's uh, a foreign film, I believe, about uh, it. Uh, and it's phenomenal. It's like one of the best. Uses of an aspect ratio I've ever seen. I can't find and, it on Letterboxd. It's just called Mommy. It's Mommy from 2014, directed by, um, I believe it's Xavier Dolan, but I'm a bit like, I don't know how I don't know how to pronounce his name. Okay, I, I, I haven't seen it, but I'm gonna watch it just so I can prove you wrong and show that it's not better than one flash. Give, give, give. Okay, what? I would. I would love for you to give it a five and put it over. Like whiplash and be like Nathan, you were right <laughs> on that. It's it's like my second favorite or my favorite movie of all time. <laughs> but uh, Wait, no, my um, favorite is Birdman. Oh, Birdman! No, I'm sorry, I can't justify that of above whiplash. Okay, I, I, oh, wow. I haven't this seen the other two, movie? but I don't agree with the Grand Budapest Hotel at all. It's a good movie. It's just not better than Whiplash. Wow, it's Winter Garden. Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy was 2014. That's that's a great year for MCU movies. Eh, I guess. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember he hates, he hates the MCU. He hates them more yeah. than I do. Uh, but uh, uh, other picks. My other picks are when Marnie was there. Lego, the Lego Movie. This is below Whiplash. When Marnie was there, the Lego Movie, Gone Girl, Nightcrawler, It Follows, Interstellar is like would be in the top ten. Even though it's not like amazing, it's good. It's you know, it's amazing. I, what are you talking about? How dare you? That's a terrible take. All your takes are terrible. I think get the heck out of here. How dare you? How dare you have an opinion? All of that. That's every a different single one. It was. <laughs> anyway, uh, you guys want to go on twenty fifteen? Sure. I already okay. Know. 
I don't think you guys have seen my favorites. So like, uh, oh yeah, I 2015 from what I know is like a pretty mid year for movies, to be honest. Uh, from what I I've seen, I'm scrolling through this now. Then, yeah, okay, yeah. what did you pick? Okay, I was gonna. I was actually gonna pick the Peanuts movie for this one. Mm-hmm. I was. I was this close. I was actually gonna. I was this close, but I picked Inside Out. Ew, God, why? <laughs> so look, okay, um, here. Let, let me hear. I, I understand. Let, let just let just hear me out first. I understand there's a lot of problems with this movie. I understand that there are plot holes. With it. It, there, there definitely are problems. However, I really like the animation. I really like the world. The concept is great. I think that the whole idea and themes about how you need all these different emotions and how like in in a way you can't just really always be like, you know, you can't always just be happy. You can't always just be one emotion. You need all these different varieties of emotions yeah. to, you know, have a great life. So I think Inside Out might actually have the most mature ending of any of them. Like I don't remember just the idea of like and you don't expect it at a first viewing. You just don't you're like it's amazing. And then when she breathed out, like, I still remember the first time I saw that. I don't know if you guys remember, but she, she like smiles and then she breathes out sadness. And then there's a combination. It's just like the ending shot. You know what I'm talking about? There's like a no. combination of emotions, happiness and sadness. I don't remember that. Well, it's the last scene remember. where she's reuniting with her family. No, no, no. Okay, well, it's, it, to me, that is that is just an incredible scene. Definitely the best in the movie, and um, I think it's very mature. But like Inside Out, I think it's just straight up bad. <laughs> so like, oh gosh, you just hate <laughs> everything. He just doesn't like mainstream movies. Okay, That's wait, not- I got a really indie pick for you. Ready? You want to know what my favorite movie from twenty fifteen is? What? I don't. You guys are gonna hate me for this. Oh, it's geez. Pitch oh, no. Perfect two, and I'm not <laughs> joking. I haven't seen the movie. Joking. I haven't seen it. I'm not. I, Nathan, how do you feel about that? I have. I. I only. I've only seen one Pitch Perfect movie, and again, it was one of those instances. It, it was one of those instances where, like, you're just at school and they play a movie, and you have really no choice. <laughs> so I saw Pitch Perfect one, and I thought it was an okay movie, and then I saw Pitch Perfect two, and I could not stop laughing the entire time. It is such a funny movie. It. It could probably be my favorite comedy ever. I don't know if there's a funnier movie. And the drama is actually not terrible. It's like, it's pretty sparse and it's not bad. I don't know. I just, I've seen all of them because I, my cousin and my sister. So, uh, how are you a reasonable critic? Abe said. <laughs> that is, that is one of my more unreasonable takes, but I do think that a lot of people who give this movie a chance, they do come back and they tell me like, Oh yeah, that was a great movie. And I feel like a lot of people just because the first movie was just kind of like eh, like people didn't really give the second one a chance, and then the third movie's actual garbage. So it's like it's I've kind of like the it's a weird enigma of cinema. You know, it's just hilarious. I've only seen the third one, and that was because it was at school, and it was like one of the most like cringe-inducing experiences. It's terrible. It's a terrible movie. It's awful. Um, Pitch Perfect Two, definitely give it a watch. I love it. <laughs> But uh, so my picks are Anomalisa, Knight of Cups, The Revenant, mm, yep. The Hateful Eight, yep. uh, C- Carol, Tangerine, The Witch, and and Crimson Peak is in a uh, Creed are pretty good too. I like Creed. Uh, it's a good movie. Good. It's, it's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I have I I can't get behind the Inside Out. <laughs> I, Look, I haven't okay, seen... it's a movie I really like. You know, I really connect with, and that's probably the reason why I love it so much. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 2016, which is fun fact, another animated movie. Uh, it's a uh, Kimi no Newa, which is your name. It's actually the one I actually the one I agree with because like it's my favorite of the year also and. <laughs> The first time ever that we have an agreement. Oh boy! I heard of Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. Uh, okay. Say, um, uh, see, what? this is kind of the same way I feel about the Silent Voice. I like the themes. I've just never been a big fan of the movie, and I just I don't exactly know what it is. I've never been a fan of like anime TV shows. 
So it could be that kind of bias seeping in. But I just think that it's not a fun movie. I wait, Olivia. I don't wait, think, Olivia. Yeah. Let me ask you one question. Have, did you see it? Like, did you see in dub where it was like English voiceovers, or did you watch it? In sub? Uh, I think I watched it subbed with Honor. If Honor's still here, I don't think he is. But uh, uh. yeah. So I just I don't know what it is. I've just never been a fan of those two movies. Now, Grave of the Fireflies, I loved. So I'm not exactly sure. I don't know what it is. I just really, I've just really never been a big fan. So I respect I mean, that's, it. I just don't like it. I just don't. I like mean, that's it. kind of fair. Oh, sorry. I, yeah, I didn't realize you were going to keep going. Uh, but I, I guess I can understand that. It's understandable. It's definitely like a very like different like movie. You know, like I feel like when it comes to like Japanese, especially you know Japanese animation and such. It's very, it's very different from like normal animation or just movies in general. Like it's a very like out there movie. I feel like, for, especially compared to like a lot of. What's funny That's is that your your name is Sun Voice are my two favorite movies of that year. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. I, I love I love both of them. They're both great. So uh, I I do think La La Land is uh, the best movie, but I also just recently came to that realization after making a twenty minute video on it. Did you watch? Did you watch the video, Gavin? No, I, uh, I watched a little bit of it. Yeah, uh, I. Land would be my third favorite. Of the Land, yeah. Well, I. It's that's the kind of movie where I, when I first saw it, I was like, "Eh, it's okay," because it's conceptually very simple, but there's so many details that make it worth it. The it's just such a brilliant concept that you just don't get the first time you see it. I don't know if I've ever watched this with someone who's seen it once and just immediately loved it. So. Um, um, I, guess, I, I, guess I watched that, it once, and it was two years ago. I gotta rewatch it. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, I guess I should start my start like wait, dude. Yeah, should I, should I just start talking about movies that you guys should probably see from the year? <laughs> uh, I I mean, yeah, you you can talk about that. I mean, uh, so sure. there's a movie. Go ahead. So I'm a I I watch documentaries quite a bit, honestly. And like, there's two documentaries I would recommend. That being Camera Person and Tickled. Uh, Camera Tickled. Person is a great like meditative experience that's like very enjoyable. It's like a it's directed by a cinematographer for a ton of other documentaries, and she basically masked up all the footage that she got from the documentaries into this one like movie, and it all like is very interesting. Uh, Tickled is a documentary about. Dear Lord, it's gonna get weird. <laughs> oh my gosh! I, I, say it, it's I'm about, ready for it. It's about a tickling competition. It's about a man who finds out about a tickling competition online, and basically he starts doing research, and it starts going to a big rabbit hole of legal issues, and of like basically them exploiting the men who do to participate in this. Oh, like, David actually that's, heard of Tickle. That's shocking. Both, but, both. Oh, Doctor. Oh, we're we're not reading these comments here. <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, they're probably all comments, though. Doctor Strange. I love that movie. Uh, Zootopia is the greatest of all time. I don't know about that. My uh, pick: 2016 amazing. Deadpool. Deadpool is a great movie, but like it, it's yeah. not even the greatest comic book movie of the year. No, a lot, a lot of that for me is is. I I'm very firm in that belief. I think I understand La La Land now, and oh, um, yeah. I think oh I'm yeah, gonna... uh, we got The Handmaiden. This is a great year. Yeah, this is a great year for sure. The, yeah, the Red this Trail, is a really good year. The year after this wasn't as Moonlight, good. Moonlight, the Silence, Hail Caesar. Yeah, overall pretty great. Si year. Silence is fantastic. What a great score set. Moonlight is awesome. I just said it, Abe. <laughs> I, I know it's MCU, but I still love Captain America Civil War. I mean, Captain okay. America Civil War, yeah, it's a fantastic movie. It's probably like one of my favorite MCU movies. Could you update it's the, one of the, It's one of the great comment? movies. Could you update the print comment? Because it's kind of outdated now. Yeah, like, it's like... Yeah. Well, well this may... This is because I, I you know, I, I'm not the host anymore. So, oh, wait, I'm the host. who's the host? Yeah, you're the host, so you have to control the comments. How do I do? No, I, no, I'm not. 
I can't do it. Well, I don't think I can do it. Try. I mean, I'm on my phone, so I don't really think. Wait, let me see if I can. Yeah, I can. I can. Okay. Can, can you know us do it? Anyway, it, we don't have to, but it, it's just kind of distracting. Yeah, I know. It is kind of distracting, especially since it's like a very active account. Let me see if I can enter back into like my other account and just. I don't know. So what about 2017? Uh, okay, hold on. I need to correct someone real quick. Uh, <laughs> the Oscars don't matter. Uh, the fact that Zootopia okay, what is this comment? Because I want to, I want to gang up on them too. Zootopia, I'm gonna read it to you. Zootopia won a freaking Oscar award. That's how you know it's great. No, the Oscars pander to Disney. Like they give every Disney. Movie an award unless it's Spider Verse, Spirited Away, or like that one other movie, <laughs> and I think one. Yeah, like, most well, yeah. I, Ghibli was Ghibli only has had one Best Picture winner, and it was Spirited Away, which was like I guess like makes sense, but like there there's been other great Ghibli movies, you know. Not even Ghibli, like like Anomalisa should have won Best Animated Feature over Inside Out or well, uh, Inside, well, I also think people just love Disney movies, like like not even that. It's not like Raya won this year. Like, oh, the, the oh it's Raya. That, well, yeah, but like the but Disney like, movies that people don't like don't usually win. Like Inside Out was considered one of the best movies. Yeah, it's not ridiculous that it won. It it just it's Disney because it was kind of like um it was a coincidence, you know. Well, it's not coincidence. It's that the Oscars only they do pander to Disney. I mean, they've showed that they have. But it's also because the Oscars, one, they don't watch the movies that they nominate or elect for Best Picture or Best Anything. Um, and they basically just go off what's popular and what has the best campaign. So, of course, a Disney movie is going to have the best campaign. Like, they're the one of the biggest studios ever. So, of course, Disney almost owns everything. So, of course, it's going to end up doing that. But that's the problem with the Oscars. The Oscars never, ever... Um, like actually going to like indie films and going to things like that. They stayed to like the most popular movies of the year, for the most part. An Oscar like, voter admitted that they just give it to Disney themselves. This voter said they don't watch anime movies. Yeah, well, I, I think that at least they don't completely nominate it always. Like I do think that the movies that win, whether they're Disney or Pixar or not. They're usually Disney or Pixar's best movies of that year. Like Coco was the best Pixar movie, was considered to be one of the best Pixar movies ever. So it it, it makes sense that it won, right? It's not like they just picked a random 27. Like again, Raya didn't win. Frozen 2 wasn't even nominated for, for best animated movie, even though, because people just didn't love it. Even but there are simply Disney. better animated movies you could nominate than that that aren't Disney. I do know that. I do know that. But people watch the Disney movies, and so they're the most popular. So they're the ones that that the Academy is going to look at the most. Like the Academy only looks at movies that are popular, right? Yeah. And another issue: the Oscars think movies are for uh, animated movies are for kids when they aren't. And that's another issue we have with the Oscars. I think yeah. just most people think that, you know? But the Oscars are people who apparently appreciate cinema. Yeah. And But then they say stuff like, oh, yeah, it's just for kids. Oh, yeah, it's just this. Oh, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to nominate Black Panther because of this and not really because of quality. It, it, it's never – they never care about cinema itself. It's just about what's popular or what's going to get the best ratings or what's, what's going to get the best, you know – Whatever, you know it, it, it. And that's kind of the issue with the Oscars. Main reason why I think their opinions are invalid. Even if I agree with them, I think it's more that. Even if I even if I agree with the best picture of that year, it's for the most part it probably wasn't because it was really the best picture of that year. They probably gave it to it because it was popular. So it's like our reasonings probably are not the same. Hmm. Okay, but you guys want to move on? Sure. Yeah, let's go back to let's go to twenty seventeen. <laughs> Gavin's like, oh. <laughs> split me off. Nah. 
Oh, well, what I was going to say is I don't think that's entirely true, though, because then, let's be honest, pretty much all comic book movies would probably be in, like, almost every category. Well, yeah, but they need – I feel like what is that the Oscars, in a way, want to seem like they're prestige when they really aren't. So, of course, they're not going to nominate – and they have been – recently, they've been nominating them. Spider-Man No Way Home got nominated, and Shang-Chi got nominated for, for like, visual effects – and other things like that too. So they're slowly starting to like pander towards them. But like, I guess they they want to see they want to see they want to be hip and cool, but they also want to be seen as prestige, and they're neither. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's go to. Anyway, okay, okay. Twenty seventeen obviously was uh you know uh despicable me thing. No question about. I thought you were going to say the Emoji movie. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, th- that one also. Yeah, that one also. They're both like on the same level of cool movie, you know? That yeah, movie is, 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 me is so sad because I actually think this Big Me 2 is better than the original slightly. I just have more fun with it. But the third movie is so bad. It's just so bad. It's so terrible. Yeah. Anyway, but like uh, the actual pick though is, of course, War for the Planet of the Apes. You know, I have not just seen is. a. I'm not mad. I'm fine. I, I have not seen a single Planet of the Apes movie, and I have zero interest, honestly. Like, They're very good. They they oh oh I got him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're very good. I mean, I I probably would pick Coco, Dunkirk, Three Billboards, the po- oh Lady Bird too. I would pick Coco or Lady Bird probably. I would I wouldn't pick any of those. Um, for me, it's uh, Phantom Thread, Call Me By Your Name, Three Billboards, Columbus, Baby Driver, Blade Runner, 2049. Oh, Baby Driver. That's a great one. Uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer, Shape of Water, Night is Short, Walk On Girl, Dunkirk. The uh, Night is Short, Walk On Girl is one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen, probably. Song to Song, Mother, Good Time. Quite a bit, you know. Not Coco. Uh, good. Where's Coco and Ladybird? I don't like them. <laughs> you don't. I I don't? agree with the Ladybird take. I agree with the Ladybird uh, take. Ladybird is isn't fine. Them. Coco, there's nothing really great about Coco. Or in its animation. Nah, I'm sorry. Nah, it's just that you hate oh. Pixar and mainstream movies, Nathan. Just admit it. Just admit <laughs> it. You only like prestigious movies. You only if, like prestigious was- movies. If that was the case, if I only liked prestigious movies, then I don't think Baby Driver would be one of my favorites. Yeah, Baby yeah. Driver's awesome. Like, it, I think Baby Driver has like a 3.8 on Letterboxd. I don't know what you could possibly have against that movie. It's um, probably some of the best action I've ever seen. If I had to put anything against Baby Driver, which is barely anything, I love it a lot, it would probably just be like some of the pacing, like the way it kind of like... And which part is, is a tad weird. It It's mostly of like... I've seen a lot of complaints that the ending apparently, like, feels weird. Like, it just, like, goes... It, like, shifts in a weird direction that kind of, like, doesn't feel natural. I don't personally agree, really, but I can see why. Because it is kind of an out-of-the-nowhere, like... Like, the ending just quickly, like, ramps up pace and kind of ends up, like, not really, like, you know... This big, you know, and I can see why that'd be an issue because it, it's only the tonal shift and, like, a mm-hmm. shift from, like, you know, what was going Because the rest of the movie is pretty cool and it was, like, action packed, but it wasn't, like, the way the ending feels is, like, kind of like a ton of stuff happening at once. But it isn't yeah, that really true. It's balanced. It's done in a way that certainly it's entertaining and not, like, messy or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wonder Woman was bad. I don't know why. <laughs> um, it wasn't bad. It wasn't well, great, why, but it wasn't why bad. Did you like I don't, I don't see it. Like so much, Gavin. <laughs> what? Okay, so basically, I think when it comes down to it, it probably has, like, out of all the conclusions for a lot of trilogies, it probably is the most raw and, like, devastating. Because if you think about it, these apes are, like, also taking over, like, human society and killing everybody. Which, spoiler alert or whatever, but let's be honest, Nathan's not going to watch the movie, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. To mainstream. <laughs> yeah. so, so, of course, when you see that happening, it's like at the same time you think, oh, well, they're technically killing our entire humankind. This is terrible. But then you see how awful a lot of these human beings are and how terrible a lot of them are. And you think, oh, maybe it's not as bad. But at the same time, like, you know, 
they're not exactly fully terrible. I feel like one thing that's great about this movie is it isn't one dimensional because you have the villain who for most of the movie seems like, you know, a completely terrible person. And then you see his back to her and like, Oh, Oh, I kind of sympathize with this guy. Maybe I don't want him to completely die. That's and really yeah, that's the thing. I like how it's not one note, you know? And Caesar's been- personal connection to uh, humans is explored so well in that movie. I think, I definitely think it's the best of the trilogy. And I do think people kind of sleep on that trilogy a little bit. I think I, I, we don't talk about it enough. No, I, a lot of people, I hear nothing but plan. <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? I feel like I'll, I, people agree that it's good. No, no, I mean, I, I hear nothing but it. Like, it is very popular. It is very low. I mean, not really, really though. Like, people will, are like, oh, people say, it's, oh, it's really good. But it's like when it comes down to, like, when people talk about the greatest trilogies, let's be honest. Spider-Man's brought up more. Star Wars is brought up more. But Spider-Man should, the Sam Raimi trilogy should not be brought up more than Planet of the Apes. No, oh, it should not be, but it is. And it unfortunately is. brought up at all. Huh? Uh, well, what did you say? Hey, Finn. We the get Raimi. it, all right? We you, like movies with, you like movies with foreign directors that are two and a half hours long that no one's ever seen before in their entire lives. We get it, okay? But we like actually watching movies, so... <laughs> I dislike the last Apes prequel movie, but I felt like it was really well made. Yeah, I feel like even if the chapter, this is kind of like the opposite of Spider-Man, where the Spider-Man trilogy is basically just three different movies with one main character, whereas Planet of the Apes, even if you don't like a chapter, they're pretty consistent. Like, I feel like it's one, two, three. Like, it feels like one story, even if it's not the best story, you know? I I still like the Rings. Hmm? A little bit like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. I that's why I think Lord of the Rings is is the best trilogy of all time because Same. it feels like a perfect trilogy and it also feels like each chapter is distinct and really good in its own right. It's yeah. like a combination of Spider Man and War of Planet of the Apes. Is that a weird connection to me? <laughs> well, has the, that con <laughs> Honor, we can't do anything about it. We've been trying to like <laughs> Yeah, we the Secret Accounts, Avatar, and Coraline, The Hangover, guys. By the way, in addition, <laughs> Abe's getting – everyone's go subscribe to Abe Makes Videos. Although yeah. we don't know if he's on the chat. He could have left. If he left, no one subscribed to him. Um, <laughs> he li- left. Hey, yo, guys, guess what? I'm going to remove the comment, I think. Really? Oh my god. Is that possible? Don't. <laughs> no, no it's, not, it's not possible. It's impossible. It's never going to happen. Damn. I'm going to keep this comment on the screen. Okay, I want to see some. Yo, it's things. gone. Oh my god. It's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> Wait, can you add new ones? I think so. I'm sorry, Abe. I, I'm sorry, Abe. It's just how it has to be. Okay, I want to see some 20. Oh, 2018. Oh boy. This is going to be a Pitch Perfect 2 Part 2, where I'm going to just nominate a really <laughs> bad movie that everyone hates. All right, let me go 2018. Oh, this is... 2018 was honestly a pretty good year. Like, it's just that, from what I've seen, it's just that, like, there were also a ton of bad ones. <laughs> yeah. No me on Juliet. That's my pick. <laughs> Absolutely not. If I swear to God. Actually, my pick is probably... Yeah, I think this is going to piss people off, but we'll see. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, obviously it's Spider Verse. There's like no competition. There just isn't any competition. It's Spider Verse. It's Spider Verse. There's no competition. I thought 2019 was Spider Verse. I'm right. I could be 2018. It's 2018. It's 2018. Okay, then yeah, you're right. No, no competition. Yeah, no competition. Come on, it's it's just indie enough, please, Nathan. Okay, let's see. Name off some indie movies from some French directors and (laughs) some German and Russian directors that no one's ever heard of. Oh, Infinity War 2, was, that's a great... This was the year of good superhero movies then, because those are two of the best superhero movies of all time for me. Like, and I nothing say, else, good, and no other good superhero movies came out that year. But, but uh, Yeah, I guess but not. But I just having those two in the same year just means it's the best year for me. But no, Spider-Verse <laughs> is great. A, a really awesome movie, but not my favorite of the year. I have like four I don't think four? I don't think any of my favorites have been your favorite. Besides, like, your name. <laughs> your name is Fantastic Mr. Fox. In your way, we're all. Vice, Bohemian... Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody is... 
I would uh, say but, Green Book is probably my second favorite, though. Um, actually, no. Infinity War is my second favorite, and then Green Book. Uh, my favorites are Roma, Climax, Isle of Dogs, Liz and the Bluebird, Spider Verse. Climax, uh, Climax S- over Spider Verse, really? Yeah. I yeah. get that it's an exciting movie, but. Suspiria, Searching. Roma's a great choice, though. Flavors of Youth, Mandy, it, uh, Eternity. Flavors Great. of Youth. Yeah. Really? Flavors no, of Youth. Wait, wait, what would you? What would you? What would you put instead of Spider Verse, Gavin? If you had to. Um. Honestly, let me see. It would. It actually would probably be Infinity War, of Black Klansman. If I'm being oh, honest. I think I prefer Green Book to Black Clans, but Green Book is you just so heartwarming and easy. <laughs> Black Klansman is really difficult to watch for me. It's just not really? a fun movie. It's not a fun movie, but it's a great movie, you know? Yeah. I do like movies that can be a little bit light sometimes. I guess that's why I like Whiplash, because it's so insanely intense, but <laughs> it's light as well. Like, there's some jokes thrown in there. There's some weird lines. Yeah, I know, Abe. I'm sorry. Have, have you lost faith in me? I know everyone hates the Oscars because they, they won Best Picture, but I really love that movie, so. But, uh, so, like, um, like Spider Verse is my fifth favorite. I love it a lot, but like Roma and Climax, especially, like hit me in such a level to the point where like Climax was probably the scariest film I've ever seen, or at least one of the scariest films I've ever seen. And Roma was one of the most emotional films I've ever seen. Um, and also both are some of the most beautiful looking films I've ever seen. Um, uh, when it comes to flavors of youth, like it's not amazing, but I still really enjoy it. I love a lot of like the animation and the the, I, I the stories are pretty good. I don't um, get how it's over Spider Verse. That that's isn't. what I don't it understand. Isn't. It isn't. Oh, I was about to say. I, I was about to say that's faith. over Spider Verse. I don't know. What to say. No, I, re- no, I no. lost. I lost faith in uh, Abe. Lost faith in me when I told him about my spirit of awakening. <laughs> Oh, The Wolf House is also a really great movie. I don't think I either of you guys it. have seen that. No, I you should. No, it's I, a great I film. definitely think that Infinity War and uh, Spider Verse are the best. I, I, I don't like Infinity War. Where do you have Infinity War, Nathan? Two stars. I haven't even seen it. Oh my! Where is it? I don't like it. I, I don't like MCU movies at all, really. Okay. Exactly. The highest one he gave was like a six out of ten. I'm pretty sure. Okay, right. we're moving. We're moving. I'm done now. We're moving on. Exactly. We're, we're mo- also, I'm don't surprised you guys think about it. I'm su- yeah. surprised you guys haven't noticed. I haven't put a single MCU movie on here yet. That's like yeah, one. because you're yeah, because you're based. I guess that, that's one base. Well, I think I think that I think that uh, it's it's hard to compete with it. Like a lot of the best movies of the year, there's been other movies like Infinity War. If you like Infinity War, you'll love Spider Verse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I like, like I don't like Infinity oh. War, but I love Spider Verse. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I feel like Infinity War. If like the people who don't like Infinity War don't like, or the people who don't like Spider Verse won't like Infinity War. But you could like Spider Verse and not like Infinity War. I'm just saying, if you do like it, you're gonna love it more. Because it, it's just, I think I, it has more to offer sense. as a superhero movie. Yeah, it kind of does, for me. Okay, 2019. Okay. 2019. 2019. There were a lot of great movies, and I haven't seen any of them, so it's Knives Out. No. I think 2019 might actually be, like, like maybe the best year that we've talked about so far. Uh, I would say 2004 is, honestly. Yeah, 2004 is pretty great, but, I mean, I don't know. I really love Knives Out. I could also go Marriage Story. Yeah. I think Marriage Story is absolutely incredible. Marriage Story is my favorite. Uh, oh, I understand yeah. that. There you go, Nathan. Uh, Thank I, you. I understand Marriage Story. It's a great movie. Yeah. I love uh, Lighthouse being my second favorite. Uh, Lighthouse 2. Parasite. Like, I feel like there's so many amazing movies this year. It was crazy. There, there are a lot. Like, I and I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> we have Marriage Story, Lighthouse, A Hidden Life, Parasite, Uncut Gems, Once Upon a Time, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Weathering a Few, Look, I'm going to pronounce this so wrong, Lux et Eterna, um, I don't know. Portrait of a Lady on Fire is, is kind of a little bit overrated, but I I think that's just because I was expecting a lot. Joker is... Joker's mid. 
kind of Joker. I did like it. I saw. I just saw it very recently. I did like it, but I feel like it's not really a Joker character. It kind of just feels like a crazy person, you know. Uh, the Irishman came out that year, which is great. We have. Oh, here's a movie that I would recommend because of how funny it is. Uh, the Death of Dick Long. <laughs> what would you pick, Gavin? Um. Wait, what do you, nice I, I already said my pick. No, what would you, like? What would you pick if you didn't like? What were your second and third and oh. third options? Oh, my my other ones would probably be it would probably be knives. I'm uh, not knives out. Marriage story. Marriage story. Uh, oh, Little Women marriage. too. Yeah. Oh, Jojo Rabbit. See, yeah, this is yeah. what I'm talking about. There's so many amazing movies. Yeah, Jojo Rabbit's pretty great. Uh, Little Women's kind of mediocre in my opinion. Uh, knives out is good. Yeah. I feel like you you you're saying things just enough to keep me like interested without completely just being like all right whatever you know I'm done I'm yeah done. whatever I don't want to talk to this guy also you get all you guys also all you guys are gonna hate my next pick I know it if okay you've fine seen it. just hit it just hit us go 2020. okay 2020 this isn't a joke this is the actual pick I picked the Pete Davidson movie The King of Staten Island. I'm not mad at that. I knew it. I knew it. I I'm knew not it. Mad at that. I'm fine. Oh, okay, Nathan. Yeah. I haven't even seen it, but Pete Davidson is really just like. Okay, well then yeah. you can't judge the movie. Now shut up. I don't, I don't know. Try your little like, corner. <laughs> I thought your favorite was like Tiger Tail or something like that. <laughs> wasn't your favorite? It wasn't your favorite run, or like I. It, it, it was. It was a run, but then like I kind of thought about the movie more, and I'm like, you know what? Nah, I like King of Staten Island. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 had, I 2020 was a weird year. Really? Uh, well, obviously, I, I think that goes without saying. Yeah, I mean, both both literally and for movies, because of course we had. I'm not gonna say we didn't. We had a lot of movies come out. It was just in such a weird way to the point where it was. There are a lot of movies in 2020 that I really need to see, but it's it was in a really it was a really weird year because like like film festivals were now in like from home, so you just like you know. And I didn't know at that time, but like, and I need to start seeing some of the films that came out that year. Uh, I, I already know. It. I already know. Gavin hates my favorite of the year. So like, what is it? It's uh, Charlie Kaufman's. I'm thinking of ending things. Oh yeah, that oh. one. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. I I'm sorry. It. Wait, did you like another round? Because that's actually an indie film that I loved. Or I want to see it. I re- that's made by oh. the same person who made The Hunt. So for me, I, I, I've i seen a lot of 2020 movies, and I think my favorite would have to be Wolf Walkers. I need to see that one, too. I, I, Wolf, I Walkers see. Is, Wolf Walkers is one of my favorite animated movies ever, and I just love studio... Um, what's the name of the studio? Same people who did Secret of Kells, um, uh, uh, Song of the Sea, but this is probably my favorite that they've made. And it's just so entertaining, and the dynamic, the the family dynamics are so good. The climax is epic. I mean, it's just amazing. Um, okay. Uh, another one I love is a film called "Pretend That You Love Me" by Joel Haver. Uh, do you guys know who Joel Haver is? No. Uh, he's he actually has like a letterbox and a YouTube channel, and that's where he posts all his movies. Like he's like an independent creator, who Cartoon makes Cartoon Saloon. Great, that's the name. Okay, who creates a ton of great films. Uh, Soul is a film I actually really loved. One of my favorite Pixar movies. I feel really bad about not liking Soul or not loving Soul. I did. Um, oh, <laughs> Artemis Fowl. <laughs> that was a great movie. I could have lived that, my that, whole that life. That honestly was like my runner up. When you every time you asked me about my runner, up, I was thinking. Should I should, but nah, I like King's Town. Uh, my, runner, my runner up is uh, um, Never Rarely, Sometimes Always. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen that. Uh, have, what I was your runner up, Kevin? Okay, I, I haven't seen that, but let's see. Uh, I didn't even look at it, so 2020, let's let's see. What, what were, I, 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 give me a The Trial of Chicago <laughs> 7, too. I, no uh, one's mentioned that in chat. Uh, other. I don't think anyone's seen mentioned that, but uh, that was a that movie, movie just yeah, that yeah. movie was mentioned and then was forgotten about. I feel like 
Maybe. Yeah, I I don't know. I really I felt like the direction was a little bit weak, but everything else technically was amazing, and I think the story is great. I feel like I didn't understand. I don't think there's enough historical context. Uh, but once I saw it again and I understood the historical context, I had a lot more fun with it. It's just a really well-made movie, and it's very, very entertaining. With amazing for me, movies. Chicago Seven was just really like boring and manipulative. It was. Why amazing. was it boring? I get. I what, it, what was it boring? It, it's every. Honestly, movie. I was expecting you to say that. I was honestly expecting you to say it, that. It, it's every biopic ever. <laughs> like I, I, the ending all. You know, and it has some great things. Like I enjoyed. Um, the way it kind of like showed the riots and stuff like that, but the filmmaking is very bland and unspecial for the most mm. part. Um, the acting is all right; it's not terrible, but it's also nothing amazing. And the ending is kind of bad. <laughs> I think the acting carries it, and uh, I think everything technically is amazing. I don't under I maybe I just haven't seen enough biopics, but I don't know. I loved it. Uh, Gavin, what was your honor up? Did you check? Uh, it was run. Run? Run is yeah, run. It's, a, it's it's a Hulu movie and it's like a thriller. It's very, you know, intense and I like it. Yeah. It, it's okay. all right. It it's a decent experience for like what it is. It has some decent ideas. It's kind of your average horror movie though. Like other than like some interesting ideas here and there, most of the filmmaking is pretty mediocre. But like, mm. yeah, it's fine. Well, it's once again, you're wrong. Okay, next year, 2021. Okay, I, I know Nathan's already gonna hate my pick, and he hasn't even heard it yet. I know uh, it Olivia... is. What? I probably already know what it is. I'm trying to. Yeah, find you probably do. So, so I was thinking West Side Story, but then I realized that Nathan won't get mad over that pick, so I decided to pick Spider Man No Way Home. Eh. I mean, like, it's not like, <laughs> I don't know. So what What movies came out in 2021? Why am I forgetting all this? I remember a seeing came things. out in 2021. A lot. Oh, come on, come on. That was probably my favorite. Unless I'm forgetting yeah. about a big blockbuster. My favorite, favorite Gavin? was Vortex by Gaspar No. What was your favorite, Gavin? Uh, I, uh, Spider-Man No Way Home. It was going to be West Side Story, but I realized that wouldn't make Nathan mad, so I picked the one that would make him mad. Yeah, No Way Home is pretty great. It's um, I want to figure out... I don't... Did I ever make a 2021 ranking? That's weird that I never made it. Um, uh, yeah, I would say TikTok I... Boom, Come On, Come On especially. I feel like you would like Come On, Come On, Nathan. I don't know if you... I don't know. I, it's an my radar. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah. my favorite is Vortex by Gaspar yeah. No. I think, how, I think that's how you pronounce it. Three guy, really? Godzilla yeah. versus King Kong? Oh, these are very interesting choices. Yeah. Can, can I explain? Can I? Uh, is it okay if I can like explain mine for a bit? Because I just yeah. want to talk about it. Because I know for a lot of people, this is probably considered an L take, especially since it's the only MCU movie that I consider a favorite. So I gotta explain <laughs> it. Okay. So. Uh-huh. I, while I do find this movie very entertaining, and of course the nostalgia base is clearly there, but I love it. I, I still like like that part of the movie. What makes this movie so great to me, what I love about it, is because Peter Parker finally feels like Peter Parker in this movie. You know, we finally get like some emotional drama with him. We finally, you know, get something that feels real. I did not expect Aunt May to, spoiler alert or whatever, I didn't expect <laughs> Aunt May to die in this movie. So, And then she does die. It's a very emotional point of the movie, and Peter Parker seems broken. You know, he's angry, and the po- and while you could say, "Oh, they clearly just added Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and uh, for Celebrate," which they probably did, they also give like them a point. This whole idea of like trying to make sure that Peter Parker doesn't go down this dark path of hatred and anger, and seeing him, you know, overcome hardships is something we haven't seen in any yeah. of the in No Way Home or Ho- I mean, in Far From Home. Or homecoming, and seeing it here is really great. So, yeah, yeah, I do love to, uh, No Way Home. I do agree with you about the the nostalgia. I think that nostalgia is fine as long as there's a point to it and it's not just thrown in your face. However, best movie of 2021 for me 
and someone mentioned in the chat it was David again. Uh, it's going to be Dune. Dune is an absolutely incredible movie. I love the pace. I love how it looks. I love the story. It's a top 15 movie of all time for me. So. Uh, no, I can't agree. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. It's not an easy watch, but I think it is. I it's not that it's not an easy watch, but more that it doesn't feel like it feels pretentious. It's not pretentious. It's that it doesn't feel when you're making. So of course, it's trying to do the Lord of the Rings Kill Bill thing, where you know you have these, you know, it's kind of like splitting up into parts. Yeah. The way it does it, when, something that makes something like Lord of the Rings or Kill Bill work is that it feels like its own thing. The the sequel. They don't feel like they're so dependent on the sequel, on the next one. They don't feel like they're depending on the next one to happen. Of course, they're gonna, of course, lead into it. But it's, but Dune feels like it's depending on Dune Part Two. Yes, it, it clearly it, is, and that's why I have such a big problem with the movie. It doesn't develop the characters in any way that you know tr that would because you can develop characters and still leave enough there to, for another one. I think it dev I think there's a lot of um, with it, the main character by Timothy played by the Timothy Chalamet. I feel I feel like he grows it, up a lot in the progression of his story. Like I feel like he realizes like, the horrors of um, Arrakis. Like I feel like in the beginning, it's kind he's kind of just like this kid who's discovering it in his palace, and then after that, he realizes how much darkness there actually is, and he has to venture forth into this random place that he's never been to. You know, I feel like that was very compelling. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. I do not care about really any of the characters, and I yeah, feel like part. Of, and maybe that was just my experience. Maybe that was just my experience. But when I was watching the movie, I, I'm I didn't care about the characters. A lot it's of like the dialogue felt kind of confusing and such as well. Like, it just felt it's, a, weird. It's, it, it's a movie that kind of feels like it. You, you're only seeing the actors and not the character. Like yeah, it's so both because for two reasons. One, it is because the cast is so, like, it, it felt like it was just one big celebrity dump. <laughs> like, literally, every single uh, actor is, like... I don't know about that. I, there's a lot of really amazing acting in that movie. Especially but then there's also the issue that the characters are so underdeveloped and so just not interesting to the point where it feels... To where all I'm seeing is, like, oh... Jason, all I'm, like I don't even remember their names. I remember Timothy. I remember them as Jason Momoa, Timothy Chalamet, or whatever. They don't feel like like Jason Momoa's death. Spoiler alert, I guess, but a lot of people have seen Dune already. Um, felt unimpactful because of how he felt like he was just a useless side character. The film he also he was the he was the best friend of it, of the main character. But I mean. the, that that relationship never really felt like it was anything special or anything we I could really we, it, the audience could really connect to at all it felt yeah. like it was just under so guys, I, I'm sorry I got I we gotta we have to move on here and finish because I, I gotta go very soon oh, yeah. I gotta, uh, I, I, let me say one more thing I, I, I hate to grieve you Nathan so I won't Dune's a masterpiece <laughs> 10 out of 10 amazing film you hate to, you hate to agree with me uh, I'm, anyway, glad, I'm glad you agree. Thank you, to Gavin. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> okay. So, next one. Now, of course, there are a decent amount of, like, I haven't seen The Northman. That's a movie I gotta see. There's other films that have come out that are probably really great, and I probably, like, maybe I like more than this movie. But for now, um, I know it it's, is. It, it's the Batman. It's the Batman. I have not seen that many movies from this year, to be fair, but it's the Batman. I'm not sure I've seen anything other than the Batman. I oh, know that's not true. Actually, hold on, let me check. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once is my favorite of the year, and uh, by a by a pretty large margin too. Um, I, I get that. I get that. I love it too, but I don't like it as much as the Batman. The Batman is mediocre. Like I Shut simply, up. The, I I I loved it when I saw it in theaters and then I simply could not care about it after. And I was like, why did I love this? Why did I care about it? Why did I even give any form of like? So for me, it's, hate, um, for, me for me, I'm going to throw you guys a little bit of a curveball, And I think I'm either going to have to go everything everywhere all at once, like you said, or Top Gun. I really loved Top Gun. I thought it was a nice, simple story. I think it too. I thought it was amazing very visuals. Yeah. Well done. Um, I can tell Gavin agrees. 
everything <laughs> everywhere all at once. There's a documentary that I watched that I really love too. Uh, called "We We We Met in Virtual Reality," which is a very beautiful documentary about kind of like people going through COVID and having to use things like uh, VR chat and other things to interact, and how we and kind of talking about things like whether or not whether or not the way you met really the the way you met or the, who you are really matters in like the uh, or like you know defines you and it's such a beautiful documentary i also love the northman that was the one i loved i loved nope and yeah, the northman seems to be the the favorite in terms of uh in terms of the comments right now the bad yeah. is aging like wine i like it more than i think about it i definitely agree with that I mean, like, okay like yeah. yeah, I gotta go back a little bit because it's very funny to me that none of us actually met, even mentioned Inside, but Honor, yeah, that's, that's an L take. That's an L take. No, no Inside is. Awesome. <laughs> it's Inside, good. I like it. I just don't think it's near you know other movies. It's the best. It, it's not the. I don't know if I'd say it's my favorite film of 2021. It's technically not even really a film. Um, yeah, I think we not. So like. I, I think I prefer Vortex. I might prefer Vortex. I don't know. Um, uh, but yeah. But back to 2022, Everything Everywhere All at Once pretty easily is my favorite for the reasons why everyone has already said. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, uh, I don't I, Yeah, there's really nothing to add to that, to yeah. that discussion, right? It's just like, yeah. we all know it. Yeah. One thing I'm very proud of, though, is that before people were like actually really talking about it, I got to go see it. And I'm really glad I got to go see it before I could. And then I just saw everyone else just started loving it. And it was, yeah. it was great. Because, like, uh, I really liked it when I saw it in theaters. And then everyone else, like, was like, oh, they thought the same thing. So I was like, oh, that's great. It's cool. I saw it a little after it got hype. Like, I saw it. I saw it when basically it, like, went into mainstream theaters. And by the time it had already. The minute, the minute it's. Like the minute it started blowing up, the minute it like fully released, it it immediately started to blow up. Mm. Like it it, was, it's kind of sorry, what were you gonna say? It, it premiered at a film festival, and just then it blew up, and then it got released in well, theaters, and then it blew up even more. Yeah, it was kind of a weird experience for me though, because I felt like you know no one really cared about it that much. Then I saw it, and then like a couple weeks after, it felt like everyone really really started talking about it. Yeah. Oh like, no, Morbius! Of course, guys. How did we forget? Oh yeah, the masterpiece. It's oh, Morphin the time. Part of the Morbius memes. God, they're All it's right, Morphin guys. time. It's a Morphin time. <laughs> it's Morbius, um, I think I do have to go right now. But this was uh, okay. really fun. Yeah. Uh, That's perfect yeah. because I can't take any more of Nathan's L takes. <laughs> Can't yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm glad we didn't go past. I, I'm I'm glad we didn't go before uh, 2000 because I don't know if I could deal with opinions like Empire Strikes Back is not the best movie of its year. Or it I Shock mean, it's not Redemption. though. <laughs> <laughs> don't be such a Nathan, Gavin. All right. <laughs> Fine, I won't be such a Nathan. Okay, uh, so that's gonna be it for. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, right. hold on, hold on, hold on, okay. hold on. I thought I forgot something. Of course, the best movie of the year is Marcel the Show of Shoes On, <laughs> which I haven't even seen. Is I haven't seen, but if Marcel, but like Honor says right here, Marcel is the best. Marcel is God. <laughs> okay, I really do have to go, guys. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess we'll end it here. Um, thank you, guys. Okay. If you if you've been here for this long. <laughs> um, do a real one for show. Um, we're gonna end this. Yeah. So I everyone is subscribe to our channel for the best, and there's no exactly. We. <laughs> <All right. laughs>